dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, dear guests. It's time to start with the new conference, International Conference of Management of Manufacturing System under the umbrella of European Association of Innovators, but not in the Patia, Croatia, now we are in the cyberspace. My name is Dragan Peraković and I'm General Chair of this conference. I am University Professor at the Full Professor at the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Traffic and Transport Science, President of the Croatian Chamber of Transport Engineering and President of Innovative FET Association from Zagreb, Croatia. Croatia. I would like to introduce you main co-organizers and partners. So for, I will start with the Technical University of Kosice, Faculty of Manufacturing Technologies from Slovak Republic. University of Zagreb, Faculty of Transport and Traffic Science, Department of Information and Communication Traffic, Zagreb, Croatia, and, and the Innovative FET Association for Promoting Innovative Technology from Zagreb, Croatia. Like I said before, the conference was organized under the umbrella of European Association of Innovators and with very good, great and productive cooperation with the Springer. It's uh, very, very important for us all of us to have uh, great cooperation and great follow-up papers from conference to proceedings, books or journal with a huge impact factor. So thanks Springer for all great previous cooperations. Just a few words about the history. First conference was held in Slovakia, in the Bratislava. Second one was in the Slovakia too, but in the Staris Mukovets. After that, Dubrovnik, Croatia, Kirica Zdroj, Poland, and now we are in the cyberspace. I'm very sorry for that, but COVID was stronger than us. Uh, we are trying to prepare the conference in the beautiful place and the beautiful hotel on the Croatian Sea, like you can see from the on the picture, beautiful view. But we must, we are must to push our conference in online mode. Just a few words about the steering committee and organizing committee. Like you can see, we are coming from different countries, from Italy, Slovak Republic and uh, Croatia. I must thanks to all members of the committee, all committees, of course, steering and organizing committee, but from the Technical program committee, I must say my thanks for the reviewers. They doing a great and powerful job for us. Just a few minutes about the numbers. Like you can see, we will provide you with the two keynotes. Like you can see on the slide, or you, we, uh, we receive a huge number of papers. Uh, accepted rate is almost half. I must mention that the, our task uh, is not to be the huge conference with 100 or 200 papers. We would like to be the stable conference with uh, this uh, approximately this number of papers. It's uh, important to say that you can see we have uh, co-authors from the big number of the countries. Austria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Czech Republic, Croatia, Germany, Ireland, Poland, Portugal, Serbia, Slovak Republic, and Ukraine. It's very important for us to create uh, synergy, international synergy, and uh, follow-ups with the international projects, new papers, and collaboration, but on the international area. Uh, just a few words about the agenda. You are looking about to the welcome speech from me. After me, we will provide you with the two different uh, Kena speech. First of all, will be Lucia Knapčikova from Slovak Republic, and after that, uh, Professor Michael Herzog from Germany with a paper titled "Future of Plastics." After that, we will provide you with the uh, oral presentation. We prepare a few sections, or sections have five paper. I will show you just a fast review of titles. A full agenda is published on the website of the conference. After this section, 
we will have poster section, uh, just free paper, but provided by, but by posters, and after that we will have closing and award, closing and best paper awards by me. So uh, I hope you will enjoy in this conference. It's new for us uh, online, but I hope you will find some new ideas, some new contacts. We will provide you networking by emails or some other channels. I hope you will enjoy and uh, will be happy with this conference. Thank you for now. Ciao.
Dear ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the EI MMS 2020, the fifth EI International Conference on Management of Manufacturing Systems. I am Aleksandra Sadyowska, the EI Conference Manager of MMS 2020. Unfortunately, due to the virus, I am not able to meet all of you in person, so I am using this opportunity to address the organizing committee, the keynote speakers, the authors and the participants on behalf of EAI. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for being a part of this conference and for your involvement with EAI. Above all, I would like to express my gratitude to the general chairs, Professor Lucia Knapczykowa and Professor Dragan Perakovic for their hard and excellent work throughout the whole process of the conference preparation. During today's event, you can actively participate in two ways. Firstly, you can join the Q&A on Slack through a link that you can see below this video. Upon accessing the EI MMS 2020 Slack workspace, you can enter all the channels which are divided into sessions. Secondly, you can vote on individual presentations and leave your fellow researchers feedback on their work through AI Compass. We will shortly show you how you can access these platforms and how to leave and receive feedback for presentations in this conference. I would also like to use this message to invite you to join us again soon. Therefore, I am glad to announce that the next edition of the conference will take place in October in Krenica Zdrój, Poland. I invite all of you to participate in MMS 2021. Should you be interested in being a part of the Technical Program Committee, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address below. Similarly, if you are interested in discussing other possible cooperation, organizing a conference or a workshop, please contact me at my email address as well. To sum up, it is our honor to organize this year's edition of MMS Conference. I hope you will have a wonderful time during this event and that you will follow the next edition in 2021. We will keep you posted and the news about this event will be available on the conference website. Now, my colleague Michal will talk more about EI tools and go into more details about the aforementioned voting. Thank you for your attention and enjoy EAI MMS 2020. I hope to welcome you again next year in Poland. Hi everyone, my name is Michal Dudic. I'm the Community Manager at EEI, European Alliance for Innovation. It's my pleasure to welcome you at this conference uh, and say a few words about who we are and what we can do for you and your research career. In short, EEI is a global community for a greener, healthier and smarter world. As of today, we are home to more than 60,000 members from 167 countries and we reach out to tens of thousands of subscribers. As an organization, we are nonprofit from day one, and what is most important to us is that we remain open to all researchers from all around the world thanks to membership that is completely free. We organize more than 100 events annually, such as this conference, and we do so in publishing partnership with Springer. I said in the beginning that EAI is a community, so let's talk about what that means and what it means for you. To put it briefly, we give our members a platform that builds their research. We do it with three main online community services where members come together to help each other write a better paper, get an objective review and get recognized fairly. The three services in question are EAI Compass, Community Review and EAI Index. Firstly. EAI Compass is an online app where you can meet and connect with new colleagues and get feedback on your paper as well as your presentation. In addition to that, it lets you download all full papers that will be presented at this conference and you can vote on your favorite presentations as well as see everyone who is here and connect with them. You can do this right now if you go to EAI Compass website compass.eai.eu. Next, we are improving the classic conference review process with community review. It has already been in use at all our events since 2019, and we were very excited to hear a lot of positive feedback from program committee members regarding the reliability and the speed of the community review. 
let's talk briefly about what Community Review does. Essentially, it is a website that shows abstracts of papers that are right in the middle of the review process, as long as the authors allow it, of course, and all EAI members may then bid to review specific papers. When they submit their bid, they put in their bio and their qualifications, which are sent to the program committee, who can then decide whether or not this bidder is qualified to review the paper they bid on. This relatively easy access to review opportunities means that bidders really need to put their best foot forward if they wish to be selected, which improves the quality of the entire review process. At the end of the day, this benefits you, the author. And last but not least, let me tell you a thing or two about EAI Index. EAI Index is our credit-based evaluation system that we rolled out this year to all of our conferences and journals that allow you to climb the global ranks of EAI community and get recognized for your work. It calculates a number value for most actions you make, such as getting your paper accepted or submitting a review, and these numbers accumulate for 12 months. At the end of this 12-month period, we put together a ladder of all EAI members and the ones at the top receive a nomination to one of the membership ranks – senior member, distinguished member or fellow. For each action that is eligible for EAI index credits, we'll look at the quality of your action as it was evaluated by another member of the community, such as, for example, the review score of your submission. To make sure that the system is fair to newcomers, every 12 months the credit count gets erased, the ones at the top receive their nominations, and every member starts at zero for the following 12 months. And finally, Smart Submit is a collaboration feature that is coming later this year. It will allow you to submit your research ideas and your work in progress abstracts to get the kind of help and feedback you're looking for. Maybe you are looking for co-authors, maybe you would like to find a mentor or a mentee, or maybe you want to find out how the community feels about your idea. This is what Smart Submit is designed for. Ultimately, it's about helping you write a better paper and increasing your chances of getting accepted. Again, we will be launching this feature later this year, so stay tuned. And so I'm going to leave you with many different ways to get engaged at different levels. There are lots of opportunities in many of our events and publications, which means many ways to connect with people and collaborate. You may learn more about everything I just talked about at our website, eai.eu. These services exist to help you and to make your lives easier, so we encourage you to send us your comments, ideas, and feedback to community at eai.eu. And if you're interested in volunteering and contributing, you can let us know at the same email address. Don't forget that you can use EAI Compass to vote on presentations in real time to determine which ones are the best, as well as to download all full papers that will be presented today. Just make sure that you log in using the same email address as the one you used to register to this conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please enjoy the conference and I hope we will see everyone online soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 5th European Alliance for Innovation, an international conference on the management of manufacturing systems. Let me introduce you my keynote speech, Material Efficiency and 3R Objectives for Sustainable Industry Applications. Sustainable Development. The successful implementation of the 2030 Agenda and its 70 Sustainable Development Goals are presented in the picture. Our priority is goal number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. By the year 2035, we should reduce the amount of the waste deposit to 10% or less of the total amount of municipal waste generated if we announce a postponement of the deadline and prepare an action plan, the Commission accepts the period of 10% will be extended. But we must take measures to reduce the amount of waste deposited to 25% by 2035. However, limiting landfilling to 25% by 2035 is ambitious. The European Union Directive is strictly given. Until the year 2030, waste that is sustainable for reuse, recycling, should not be accepted at the landfill except for waste where landfilling provides the best environmental results. What is material efficiency? Material efficiency strategies include products that last longer, remanufacturing and modular manufacturing, reuse and recycling of products components, using less material in products designs, or redesigning manufacturing processes to use less energy, less water, or less raw materials. It can also include replacement of scarce and expensive elements, notably too critical for energy applications. Zero Waste Philosophy the three R objectives, especially in the material recycling of plastic waste, either technologies used in the processing of pure plastics are used, which require pretreatment of plastic waste, like crushing, grinding, washing, or modified technologies taking into account specific requirements in the processing of mixed plastic. If we look on the third pyramid, we can see zero waste hierarchy. On the top, and the our three R objectives are included on the top of this pyramid, like a refuse, reading, and redesign, reduce and reuse of new materials, or preparation for reuse. On the bottom of this third pyramid, is an acceptable approach for zero waste hierarchy. Our priority is using recycled material for manufacturing of a new composite material. Recycled polyvinyl butyral Shortly, PVB resins are produced from polyvinyl alcohol and n butyral dehyd in the condensation reaction. Polyvinyl butyral resins offer a wide range of performance properties, including good flexibility, firm toughness, and adhesions. The global polyvinyl butyral resins market can be divided into the following five regions North America. Europe, Asia-Pacific, Latin America, and Middle East and Africa. Asia-Pacific is a leading consumer of polyvinyl butyral resins across the world. Followed by Europe and North America, Asia-Pacific is expected to lead the global polyvinyl butyral resins market in the near future, also due to rise in the demand for polyvinyl butyral resins in the building and the construction sector in the region. The polyvinyl butyral resins market in the Europe is led by Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. The global polyvinyl butyral resins market is consolidated with the market players focusing on 
incorporating advanced technologies to gain higher market share. The suppliers are offering a complete portfolio or products and focusing on different business strategies to their market position. Polyvinyl butyl is a thermoplastic material that is soluble in ethanol, bitanol, ethanol acetate in the mixture of chlorinated hydrocarbons and insoluble in aliphatic hydrocarbons in gasoline. Selling price of the recycled polyvinyl butyrol is from 25 50 cent per kilogram. By our research, we used the recycled polyvinyl butyrol after windscreen recycling in the form of the flakes, colorless, with the size 20 30 millimeter, with the purity more as 97%, impurity content less as 3%. Impurity content, it means like a rest after wind screen recycling, like glass. Our priority is used the polyvinyl butyrol as a matrix in the composite materials or in the manufacturing of the new composite materials. These composite materials are reinforced with high strength fibers like aramid, glass, carbon and cordenka. The general definitions of a composite material say that the composite materials are composed of at least two or more chemically different components, where one of the components is referred to as a matrix, in our case it is polyvinyl butyrol recycled, and the second component is a filler. In our case, we choose or we selected four high strength resin fibers, aramid, glass, carbon, and cordenka. In the table, are presented the most mechanical properties for each of uh, filler. Before mechanical testing of composite materials, we provide the homogenization of polyvinyl butyrol. The homogenization of polyvinyl butyrol was realized by kneading equipment. Homogenization of mixture was conducted at 150 degrees during 30 minutes. And the machine temper temperature was 200 degrees. The pressing process takes place in the three cycles. At first, preheating with a duration 20 minutes. Pressing, period of 50 minute, 15 minutes and the cooling 20 minutes. After homogenization of thermoplastics po uh, poly of polyvinyl butyrol was pressed, the test specimens with prescribed dimensions necessary according to standards DIN-EN 527. In the following table are presented the results after tensile testing of our composite materials. In the table in the bottom, it is only for imaging for the tensile with the tensile test properties for a polyvinyl butyrol resin and the polyvinyl butyrol recycle. The key factors of a new material. The new composite material based on recycled polyvinyl butyrol generally has several stages of development. 
which are presented on the on the slide number four when I spoke about sustainable materials based on recycled polyvinyl butyrol. Only by constantly increasing the professional knowledge and practical experience of employees and last but not least, by constantly improving the processes of innovation and development, the company leads to the development of new products with their applications possibilities. In the table we prepared the most significant key factors for our composite materials reinforced with high strength fibers and we compare the material strength, shape memory, elasticity of materials, corrosion, res corrosion resistance, available technology process, non-toxicity and recyclability. Application of traditional material like wood or plastic without filler with the comparison of our new composite brings a possibility to respond for customized customers' requirements. The use of composite materials in the exterior conditions has advantage in the following areas, like do not rot, do not corrode, do not absorb moisture. Advantages over the sustainable composite materials, like uh, newly created or manufactured materials, cheaper inputs be because uh, we, uh, we are focusing on three R objectives. So our priority is use the recycled material. Mechanical proper properties are common with other similar material. By using of composite materials made of recycled polyvinyl butyrol and reinforced with the glass, carbon, aramid, and cordenka fibers, it also prevents the penetration of soil moisture into the fencing. As we can see, and we do not forget to to, for the product life cycle, it is very important to to think of the life cycle of the product before the manufacturing or creation of the new material. So this is not the last step by the research, but it is very important step on the or by the starting of, of the of the our research. Thank you very much for your attention and in case of any questions, feel free to contact me via my email. Thank you so much and have a great event.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the possibility to highlight some aspects of the future of plastics at this conference dealing with the management of manufacturing systems. If we look to the future of technological and ecological topic affecting people all over the world, we should have a global view. Global view to urgent developments of the human society are fixed in the sustainability goals of the United Nations, also called Agenda 2030. We recognize that plastic are not directly addressed as a sustainability goal, but the use of plastic contributions a lot of, for example, to the conversion of food to might gate the hunger goal 2 or to modern medical system goal 3. If we have uh, such humanistic view to the future, we are not wondering that a world without plastic is not realistic. Uh, quite in contrary, humans shape the world globally since decided and plastic are an unavoidable part of modern societies. To enhance this, I insert a slice to illustrate the dominating role of humans. 
On this slide, you can see a study of the Weizmann Institute shows the impact of human civilization to the life on Earth. And I take only one mass bilance, uh, the biomass of terrestrial mammals, only the 5% uh, in wildlife and 95% are humans and our livestock. Uh, for example, cattle, uh, pigs, and so on. So we have a great responsibility for future generation. On the other side, we could not reach former states of the system Earth. In the public, we have a split um, perception uh, and what is the plastic reality. We have a rising plastics production of more than 300 million tons. The lightweight potential and hygienic function of plastic are accepted. An opinion poll revealed 49% uh, of the Germans are afraid from plastics in the ocean. There is a Greenpeace action plan with the name Fighting Plastic Pollution and the United Nations declared the war to plastic packaging. Scientific publication shows a short individual consumption of 100,000 microplastic particles per year. What does it mean for my life? Surprising results were published by the Danish Ministry of Environment and Food. Uh, they are not a suspect of lobbying for special industrial players. And here uh, we can see a direct extract of the of a light cycle uh, assessment of simple carrier bags as we know it from the supermarket. Uh, we chose the calculated number of primary reuse times for the carrier bags for their most preferable disposal option. Necessary to provide the same environment performance of the average low density polyethylene carrier bags. Reused as a waste bin bag before incineration. Without going too much into detail, we find that the ecological footprint of plastic bags are not so bad as uh, to fear the worst. Um, Plastic in the environment is uh, not really accepted. Different strategies are possible. Uh, first, the ban of plastic to reduce consumption. Uh, second, to change the production properties, for example, uh, using bioplastic. And third is the waste management system to prevent leakage to the environment. Uh, these three dimensions are shown in diagrams. The national mix of methods is characterized by a one point in the space of the diagram in red. It left a strategy mainly to improve the collection system of plastic, to separate it from uh, municipal waste, for example. The middle strategy shows a higher contribution from plastic producer by enhanced product quality for recycling, whereas the right strategy is focused at uh, the ban. A good choice if technological approaches are not available or, the, or too expensive for local communities. So worldwide, we find different solutions from ban, taxes, to support the waste management or voluntary agreements to improve circular approaches by improved plastic material. Uh, and for example, in Europe, including Swiss and Norway, we find the following uh, situation. Since 2006, the amount of uh, plastic sent, sent to recycling has be, been doubled. Uh, landfill, landfill is drastically reduced. Incineration, which means uh, thermal recycling, is increased and this under a rising tonnage of collected plastic waste.
On this slide, we can see the plastic post-consumer post waste rate of recycling energy recovery and landfill per country, which is shown on the table. We find widespread non-harmonized at European level, also uh, there is many different national solutions. Uh, the recycling content is varying, but the most obvious difference is between landfill like France, Greece or Cyprus uh, and incineration like Germany and uh, Netherlands. Both strategies are not really sustainable. But what happened in 2019, uh, there is uh, in 2019, the European Commission adopted uh, the European strategy for plastics in circular economy. Uh, the strategy first for the strategy is the K challenges, uh, which are the high demand for plastic products in developed societies. Uh, reuse and recycling of end-of-life plastics remains too, too low. Demand for recycled plastics today account for only around 6% of plastic de demand in Europe. Uh, the next challenge is, is uh, plastic pollution production and uh, plastic production and uh, incineration of plastic waste give rise globally to appro approximately 400 million tons of carbon dioxide per year and increasing the market shares of plastic with biodegradable properties. Uh, the second strategy or the next strategy is the turning these challenges in opportunities. Uh, that means a smart, innovative and sustainable plastic industry where design and production fully respects the needs of reuse Repair and recycling brings growth and job to Europe and helps cut European greenhouse gas emission and depends on important fossil fuel. The third strategy is turning vision really in the reality. In Europe, citizens, government and industry support more sustainable and safer consumer and products uh, many patents for plastics. This provides a uh, fatal ground for social innovation, creating a wet of opportunities for all Europeans. What this means, um, the European plastics industry support the European Commission strategy for plastic in a circular economy and is highly committed to accelerate its transformation towards an even more circular and resource efficient plastic economy. Today, sophisticated plastics contribute to circularity, to health and safety, and to mitigate climate change. However, the voluntary commitment of the European plastics industry state to make the most of these extraordinary materials, challenges related to the end of life of certain products and particularly plastic packaging waste need to be more addressed. The industry is on way to next level of ingestment by establishing um, ambi ambitious targets and initiatives to prevent leakage to the environment. So um, we, we still have knowledge and uh, legislation gaps related to plastic in the environment. Uh, nation, national government programs is looking for approaches for resolution compared with other pollution and the legal framework of limiting values, monitoring and finally law enforcement. We have to standardize it. And we, at the moment, we don't have a standardized analytical method for the determination of plastics in water, which is expected in the next year. The standards for soil and air will be available even later. That's why we have a program of the Federal Ministry for Research and Education 
to investigate plastics in the environment, especially balances of sources and things to give a basis for the toxicological evaluation and to divide current proof limiting values for a system of monitoring and action. Even if political responsibility are not uh, clarified, it became appeared that it's necessary to separate the scientific evaluation in an institution like an institute at the political decision in an institution like agency. What are the technological developments? Um, the top priority is sustainability. Uh, that was shown also on the CAMESET 2019. Um, during the big trade trade fairs, we find the uh, commitment to circular economy. First, especially uh, recycled pet applications. For example, recycling pet from ocean bound plastics or use of recycling pet for clamshells or recycling pet in 3D printing filaments and 3D printing technology. The general strategies, strategies are incorporating bio-based materials to increase the sustainability, but also the chemical recycling for alternative feedstock. Um, original equipment manufacturer examples are bio-based hardener for polyurethane coatings, upgrading of recycled poly polypropylene for automotive application and monomaterial fumes for better recycling properties. Uh, what's our, it's our contribution. Uh, we have a long history in the chemical recycling of polyurethanes and at the moment we are working on a new Eurostars project directed to producing sealed electronic devices by one shot reaction injection molding uh, which is 100 percent renewable materials so another more spectacular attempt to tackle the problem of plastics is the ocean in the ocean are so-called ocean cleanup activities from engineering point of view, the prevention of release, this means the elimination of leakages by a waste management system is much more efficient uh, collection in the ocean, but it doesn't produce so nice picture to be attractive for sponsorship, uh, what we can see here or, or is shown with uh, fishing for plastic near to the Golden uh, Gate Bridge. There is a big difference between the start of a new campaign or the business model with the name waste uh, ocean treatment and on the other side continuously consistent work for sustainability goals and quality of every day's life. Yeah, I want to take for your uh, want to thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you.
Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of our paper on subject Review of Automatic Passenger Counting System in Public Urban Transport. 
As you can see on the screen, orders of this paper are Ivan Grigorevich, Karlo Jursic and Vinko Rajic. We are coming from Faculty of Transport and Traffic Sciences, which is part of the University of Zagreb. On, on today's agenda are Need for Speed, where we will discuss and emphasize the importance of number of passengers. Then we will introduce the concept of automatic passenger counting, after which we will make a breakdown of APC systems. We'll make analysis of existing APC solution, overview of practical application. Then we will finish with conclusion and we will be open for your questions. Main characteristic of 21st century is need for rapid input and output of information. This need is strongly emphasized in business organization as there is need to respond quickly to market demands. In the context of public urban transport, this is addressed by passenger transport logistics, which is focused on creation and optimization of transport supply in accordance with passenger demands. In order to determine the demand, it is crucial to know the number of passengers, which is further determined by passenger counting. Passenger counting is process by which is determined the flow of passengers in the vehicle on a sig single public transport line, and it is carried out on several predefined points along each line. Main goal of passenger counting is optimization of public transport, which should be a primary transport mode in urban environments. Passenger counting is performed by observers at predefined locations, or based on the amount of sold tickets. Although these methods are st still in use, they are considered unre unreliable due to numerous factors such as fatigue of the ob observer, their level of expertise and experience, weather conditions, fair evaders, and etc. The solution for elimination of weakest link in the chain, that is human, is implementation of APC system. Although relative novelty on the market, they are available for sale and use in various form and designs. Since APC system provide numerous advantages in relation to other methods, as they are considered, considered as a desirable substitution for manual passenger counting and counting based on sold tickets. As such, APC system represents one of the backbones for future integration and concept of smart cities. The main advantage, advantages offered by the APC system include elimination of human influence on accuracy of results, fast and up-to-date data collection and processing, constant accuracy and reliability of results compared to manual counting where the accuracy and reliability varies, allows work in all weather conditions, possibility of consecutive counting for several days in a row on the same line and gathering information and making conclusions for the optimization of public transport. In spite of numerous advantages offered by the APC system, there are also drawbacks that can make it difficult or impossible to use. A large initial investment is required when integrating APC system into the public transport vehicles. Accuracy is not 100%. It often happens that the number of boardings and deboardings of passengers do not match. And finally, APC system cannot identify the emergencies. Main characteristic of APC is that there is no universal solution that could be applied in all situations. This is due to different financial and infrastructural possibilities of public transport service providers. Because of that, service providers must conduct self-evaluation as a means to find suitable and affordable APC system for implementation. Due to various technology that are used for APC system, they can be divided into integrated, where there is the, the direct interaction with the passenger, 
and independent which are unrelated to the validation and contains various counting technology as, as well as methods that are used to find an adequate and unobtrusive way to monitor the number of passengers on, on board vehicles. There are various solutions regarding the integrated and independent APC. For that reason, they can, they can further be classified as shown in this picture. RFID and gate-based systems for integrated APCs and optical and pressure sensors as well as computer vision and Wi-Fi based system for independent APCs. Although APC systems are different in technological aspect, they share same or similar core, core con concept that is shown in this picture. Passengers enters, enters the vehicle, of in, inf, vehicle or infrastructure of public transport, which is detected by APC sensors. After detection, the raw data is sent to database and microcontroller for initial processing. After that, data, data is sent to the data management system where calibration is conducted. By calibration is meant corrective data corrective data validation necessary for the determined precise number of passengers. Furthermore, there is existing feedback loop if additional changes of configuration of specific APC components is needed. After that, process data is stored for future usage. RFID device uses radio signals that are sent to the transporter, or also known RFID tag, which gives feedback in form of identification cone and or a series of data that are stored in transporter memory. The advantage of RFID in relation to other integrated technology is that it does not have any mobile parts and it's easy maintainable. When RFID is used as a core for validation system, concept of tickets is replaced with smart cars, whose data can be used for determining passenger movement and demographic data. Then, based on demographic, user profile can be created, which in return creates opportunities for determine, determining behavioral trends. The gate-based methodology is integrated and connected with the validation system, and as such, it is usually used in metro and, and airports. Key characteristic of this APC is ticket validation with simultaneous passenger counting. Main advantage is accurate and reliable information about number of passengers since pa passengers have to go through a physical barrier located at the entrance of at the entrance or exit of public transport infrastructure. Main drawback of this type of APC is it is lack of its flexibility in the context of APC implementation, by which is meant difficult implementation in more dynamic environments such as bus and tram. The most used optical sensor is infrared and it is a simple in the context of APC system. Their main characteristic is affordable pricing as well as simple implementation. Design requires minimum of two sensors in order to avoid intersecting of IR beams. Furthermore, there are two designs. Active sensor in their design include a receiver and a transmitter, where the transmitter generates the IR beam, which has the purpose of detecting the passing through the cross-section of the counter. The main characteristic of passive sensor is py pyroelectricity, which means that they are designed to emit one IR beam, which is then divided into multiple beams. This type of APC is often used in combina combination with other technology technologies to increase accuracy level. Precious sensors are often very easy to implement and use. For this paper, two types of pressure sensors have been identified. Pressure met and calculated mass and motion. 
Pressure mat is most often used in public transport for the purpose of check checking entrances or exits out of the vehicle so that the door can be closed. Closed. In spite of that, this type of sensor can be used for passenger counting by reacting every time a passenger steps on it. This type of APC is not optimal for heavy usage or traffic jams because some of the pa passengers usually stay standing on the sensor. Calculating mass and motion is more complex, complex and expensive and as such can be used in two ways. Integrated in vehicle which can vary in design and is cheaper alternative. Integrated in infrastructure which is expensive and requires extensive construction works. Main component of computer vision is optical sensor, which usually doesn't require any additional investment. Computer vision has no mobile parts, nor does it require any special maintenance. Technolo technology can be implemented using only one sensor, but it's preferably to use two or more sensors. In case of low visibility, LED can be used to compensate. Furthermore, for computer vision to work, software implementation is needed. Software works by in identifying shape of passengers. It can make distinct distinction from environment and can de detect directions of movement. Capabilities of computer vision solely depends on used software as well as, 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 well as used AI. Problem regarding the computer vision is that it can cause privacy issues as it, it, it has direct effect on passenger psychology. APC systems which use Wi-Fi methods are based on number of detected mobile terminal devices within the access point radius or based on number of associated mobile devices. These methods can be used on board public transport vehicles if the vehicles have implemented APs. By detecting passenger devices, frame estimate of the number on board public transport vehicles can be made. Problem with it when determining the exact number of passenger devices is that access point on board vehicle will also detect devices that are outside of the vehicle. Furthermore, number of devices are not necessarily equal to number of passengers. On one extreme, older population carries one or no devices, while on the other, younger population carries one or more devices. Although there is evident issue with accuracy result, it is anticipated that Wi-Fi based methods will be more frequent in the future. Constant testing and implement, implementing various technology resulted in increase of APC accuracy. The principle of using various technology in the function of automatic passenger counting does not differ a lot. However, due to different possibility of public transport service providers, application and the use methodology are not the same. This means that there are no unique solutions since different public transport service providers have different challenges that have to be approached in different ways. Based on overview of existing research, we found that these four technologies are more commonly used for passenger counting. Note that hybrid systems are made of IR sensors, pressure, a pressure APCs, and computer vision. We observed accuracy per paper and noticed that there are inconsistency and accuracy due to dynamic nature of public transport. By var variable accuracy is meant there are various results that can be summarized by simple per percentage as a measure. Favorable place of research is bus with only two testing in testing, one in train, one in tram. Large number of paper use the bus subsystem of public urban transport and the reason is the outspread and numerous use of this type of transport mean in urban, in urban environments.
Apart from researchers analyzing this paper, a large number of other paper studies have been analyzed. Due to lack of relevant data about quality of the performed measurements, many papers weren't taken into con consideration. Also, some measurements have been carried out in laboratory conditions on very small sample and as such failed to compare to the real public transport environment. Need for accurate number of passengers in public transport is a universal problem while solutions are different and numerous. There is no universal technology or method of automatic passenger counting. With new innovative ways of passenger counting, it will be possible to use real-time data transport for linking information system and APC components. In return, this will be one of many backbones of completely automated system and implementation in Society 5.0. Thank you for your attention. Now we will receive your question.
technology transfer and foreign direct investment in the light of innovation management on the example of Poland, an article by Professor Magdalena Byczkowska, Professor Anna Meisel and Professor Janusz Sowoń from Academy in Gorzów Wielkopolski, Poland. In today's world, technology has become the key to innovation and the competitiveness of business. Investing in and disseminating new technologies has been recognized as a driver of economic growth for many years now. New technologies provide a wide range of benefits for business and open up new perspectives for human activity. They accelerate more efficient working methods initiate improvements in the quality of products, services and increase production efficiency, shorten the time to market and consequently provide opportunities for increased competitiveness and business development. Countries whose development capacity is limited have become one of the key factors in their economic development. With a negligible level of domestic savings and low accumulation capacity of domestic enterprises, the supply of external capital has become one of the main conditions for the countries of Central and Eastern Europe, including Poland, to improve the competitiveness of their economy. It should be stressed that the inflow of FDI is not limited to supplementing the internal accumulation of capital, but brings about such an important transfer of technology and knowledge. The importance of this process is a component of several aspects. Firstly, technology transfer increases the available production factors. This may include, for example, foreign workers providing technical services or holding managerial positions in local companies, imported machinery and equipment, foreign raw materials, components or parts not available in the country and accompanying technology transfer contracts. Secondly, foreign technology contributes to economic growth by using existing resources. They can create additional employment opportunities for the unemployed, reduce unionist potential in certain sectors of the economy. Finally, the transfer of foreign technology can result in a significant increase in the productivity of existing production factors. The above reflections give rise to the main thesis of the article, which is that in insufficient equipment of technology and knowledge of companies from less developed countries is a premise for seeking external sources of power in the form of foreign direct investment. However, the aim of the article is to identify the issues related to the scope and effects of foreign capital impact on innovative activity, including technology transfer by Polish companies. The measurement tool was a survey questionnaire uh, which contained both open and closed questions. In the case of the majority of closed questions, it was possible to add own answers to the proposed variants not provided by the author. Entrepreneurs marked their chosen answer variants with an appropriate sign or assigned them a specific scale of importance by assigning the given values. The data obtained in this way were developed on the basis of the number of answers given to the given question. The questionnaire consisted of three main parts and the so-called TAC, where respondents were asked to provide basic information about the company. The main parts of the questionnaire are Part 1 – Cooperation and Undertakings Part 2 – innovative activities and technology transfer, part 3, transfer of knowledge. As a result of the actions taken, 45 correctly completed research questionnaires 
out of 120 were returned, which means a return of 37.5% and allows the results to be generalized to the whole community. Among the 45 companies that took an active part in the survey were large companies with an average employment of 565 people. In the surveyed sample, the majority of companies with foreign capital and those with a majority share of foreign capital prevailed. The vast majority of investors who engaged capital in the surveyed companies came from the European Union, 81%. The majority of them were investors from the European Union, just as Germany, France, Sweden, Holland. From outside the US structures, capital came from Switzerland and the USA. Foreign enterprises surveyed represented mainly the industrial sector, industrial processing 51%, financial intermediation 20%, and trade and repairs 13%. The activities of the remaining 15.7% of the respondents focused mainly on transport, warehouse management and communications, construction and hotel and catering activities. Among the surveyed foreign entities, the vast majority were the enterprises created from scratch. They prevailed both in the industrial and service sectors, dominating the sections of the economy represented in the study. Much less often, foreign investors built new enterprises together with Polish capital, creating the so-called joint venture. Foreign enterprises operating in Poland were active in Aveshedivili. They introduced at, or tried to introduce at least one innovation. The research showed that innovations were most often introduced by entities with 250 employees and more in the sector of industrial and service enterprises. Those entities implemented both product 40 and 31 percent respectively, process 45 and 40 percent respectively, and organizational innovations 60 and 55 respectively. The above data indicate that the number of implemented innovations is higher in industrial or service enterprises employing over 250 people and the profile of activity has a significant impact on the innovative activity of these enterprises in case of introducing product, process and organizational innovations. The largest number of product innovations were implemented by industrial enterprises. 22%. They gain an advantage over service companies also when introducing process innovations with new or significantly improved product manufacturing methods. 20%. There was also a relatively high interest in introducing new methods on the principles of organizations among industrial enterprises. 16%. Slight Slightly less frequently, new methods of division of tasks and decision-making powers were introduced by enterprises from the service sector, 9%. Whereas in the last group of marketing innovations, industrial enterprises implemented innovations in significant changes in the design, construction or packaging of products and services, 16%. The same percentage of innovative activities were introduced by service companies in the field of new media or media guarantee techniques. The dominant type of innovative activity carried out by the surveyed foreign companies was investments expeditors in tangible assets, purchase of machinery and equipment, computer equipment, 
means of transport as well as buildings, 61% of the total number of companies active in innovation. Next, foreign companies incurred outlays on employee training, nearly 50%, Purchase of software related to the introduction of product and process innovations, nearly 40%, and marketing activities related to the introduction of new or significantly improved products, nearly 30%. Incidentally, the innovation activity among foreign companies was related to research and development works. Only 7% of innovatively active enterprises took action in this respect. According to the group of surveyed enterprises active in innovation, the mean benefits from the introduction of innovations were general development of the enterprise, nearly 70%, improvement of the quality of products and services, 60%, improvement of the organization and working conditions, 60%, and increase of work efficiency, 70%. The main sources of knowledge about new technologies of the Soviet international companies were fairs, exhibitions and specialist industry conferences, 68% of indications, professional and popular science literature, 52 of indications, and knowledge gained from competitors or suppliers, 22% each. Next, technological knowledge came from scientific research units and universities, 14% of responses. The importance of the in institutional environment was marginal and constituted only less than 5%. The main point of reference for the degree of knowledge of the latest technological solutions for en entrepreneurs were the main industry competitors. 60% of companies. In turn, for more than one in three companies, these were industry leaders. Only about 2% of companies admitted to a lack of good knowledge of the latest technological trends in a given industry. Most foreign companies, 76%, have made a technology transfer in recent years involving the purchase of machinery and equipment needed to implement a new or modernize an existing production or service process or have acquired new knowledge to implement new solutions in the company. The most common form of technology transfer was purchase of machinery and equipment 78% of indications and consulting services 32% of indications. Next, uh, foreign companies indicated purchase of list licenses, 20% of indications, and purchase of scientific research results, 9% of indications. The following con conclusions can be drawn from the analysis above. The innovative activity, regardless of its type, is correlated with the size of the company. The bigger the company, the more often different types of innovative activity are conducted and outlays for this activity are incurred. Foreign capital in enterprises was in most cases connected with undertaking investment undertakings in those enterprises. However, those were not one-off initiatives, but continued in subsequent years. Investments made by enterprises with foreign capital participation were most often related to the purchase of fixed assets, training of employees and modernization of buildings and structures. The main source of financing of innovations were of were own funds of companies. The basic external source of funds for innovation were traditional financial institutions and European funds. In addition, the studies carried out showed that the entrepreneurs had a good understanding of new technological solutions in the industry. Knowledge of technological changes in the industry was mainly derived from literature, 
are popular science as well as fairs, exhibitions and conferences. Most of the surveyed companies have recently implemented innovations by purchasing technology, mainly machinery and equipment. The role of technological imported goods was important for the productivity of domestic and industrial companies. The choice of the source of technology transfer was influenced by both the type of innovation impl implemented in the company and the support from business environment institutions. In order to determine future trends in cooperation between domestic and foreign companies and the effects of corporate cooperation, the author plans to expand the research for subsequent periods and update these issues raised.
Hello all and welcome to the online conference MMS 220 2020. It is really unfortunate that we could not be physically present and in communication. It would have been great as in previous conferences. But we are very fortunate that we could do it on as an online conference and present our work and findings irrespective of the current COVID situation. My topic for today's presentation and my submission to the conference, my paper is parametric evaluation and cost analysis in an EXL assembly layout. I work as a researcher at ProtoFuture and also as a doctoral student at the Graz. The research center ProtoFuture is situated in Graz as well as in Linz. We have five areas which focus on different aspects of Industry 4.0. Starting from Area 1. Area 1 is Perception and Aware Systems which focuses on the surroundings, machines, uh, adapting to humans as well as cooperating machines etc. Area 2 focuses on robotics and shop flows such as thinking robots, thinking shop flows and so on. Area 3 focuses on cognitive decision making. It is directed towards data sciences, data analysis, computational data analytics and etc. Area 4.1 and 4.2 form the center of all these areas. Area 4.1 combines all these technologies to form cognitive products such as power tools and so on. Area 4.2 focuses on the shop floor level getting all these technologies into realization. Fortunately, I work in Area 4.2. And this paper also is derived from this area where we present a real use case applied on the shop floor. All the technologies have been combined from these different areas. So this paper depicts the various technologies or cognitive technologies utilized. Graz or our office is situated where our office is situated lies in the lower part of Austria. As you can see it is a very beautiful city. Indeed it would be a pleasure to host one of the conferences, MMS conferences over here in the next years. I would be glad to be a part of it. The outline for today's presentation is as described here. We described the product e axle then with the continuation study, the selected technologies and cost model, the methodology used, the clustering of tasks and the new assembly layout that has been derived and finally the simulation and results. Beginning with the product e axle e axle com uh, comes under the whole domain of electric powertrain. With respect to IC engine, we can say it is the powertrain unit that combines the engine, the fuel storage system and etc. and so on. Electric axle co contains the electric, electric drive system which has the electric motor, inverter and the electric control unit. It, com it is integrated mechanically with the transmission system and to the wheels. The energy storage system is not the part of E-axle. E-axle is further clustered into two systems that is energy conversion system and torque conversion system. When compared to the IC engine or the normal fuel cars that we have, they, are a little, they have a huge variety. But in electric cars, the variety is even more vast. They can vary with respect to energy systems or torque systems. In energy systems, we have power electronics, motor type, 
motor positioning cooling and in torque we have transmission type gears torque division and additional features as you can see over here each unit can further be subdivided into many units the numbers you see over here one two three are being clustered from major e axles one and two are our use cases that is e axle a and e axle b these e axles are also from what automotive suppliers are and are in a confidential uh, clause hence we could not reveal the name the other names that is 3 4 5 and 6 are from major automotive suppliers where you can see that each all the e axles can fall under this these categories so we can make a matrix or a morphological box combining all the e axles Hence, most of the e axles, almost 95%, can be clustered by these classifications under these uh, energy systems and talk systems that we have uh, provided in this slide, as well as in the paper. Hence, this is a new technique that has been followed, which has not been done before in clustering all the e axles available on the market. Also, to further support these metrics, recent automobiles, uh, automobile vehicles can also be clustered as it has been shown over here. So this paper is a continuation study from the previous papers that we have been we have published. Fortunately, the first paper that we published with respect to this work is also in an MMS conference in 2019. It and it is a good news to announce you all that it, it had won the best paper award in MMS 2019 last year in Poland. The second paper that has been published is in a SERP conference, uh, which is to be which is to be held, which was held in uh, Croatia in Greece. I'm sorry, which was held in Greece in Athens. This is the third paper that is uh, in MMS 2020 with this topic. Over here, it is the most important paper as we publish the results and we build a cost model of these initial tests that have been done. The selected technologies and cost model is explained in this section. Since there was a huge morphological box with the technologies that has been described in the first paper in MMS 2019. All these technologies could not be implemented or realized in the initial implementation phase in the assembly layout. Hence, certain technologies have been, have been selected and realized for implementation. That is picto light technology, picto voice technology, static screen, uh, hybrid picto light and picto voice system. The picto light technology focuses on part picking, picto voice on assistive systems, the static screens on assistive guidance systems, and hybrid picto light and picto voice, picto voice systems focuses on process flow and assistance systems. The architecture of one of picto one of the technologies that is picto light system is explained over here. We have part boxes varying from part A to part B, C and D. It has been named as A, B and C based on the distance from the worker. Part A workers, part A boxes are placed very close to the worker and hence he can reach it with minimum time. Part D are rarely used uh, parts and have been placed in the corner. This system uh, realizes the worker if he has picked the part right or wrong. Also, it indicates which part must be picked. For example, an, a green light indicates part C, is indicated on part C. Hence, the worker must pick, pick uh, the parts from this box. The LED lights and the IR sensors reflect LED, emit LED lights to the receiver. These indicate which these indicate the worker to that the part this part must be picked suppose he picks a part b he cuts the rays from the receiver uh, to the receiver hence an indication is shown uh, which is placed above 
that the part picked is wrong. The architecture of this pictolite system is seen on the right image. We have a host system that is the main warehouse logistics system. It is connected to the date display data concentrator and the database or emux. It further is connected to the database server where all the where which part has picked which and all the indications are stored. The display data concentrator further through an emux network is uh, connected to the pictolite systems at the individual stations assembly line 1 assembly line 2 and so on it is all a wireless network hence it avoids major chaos at the at the shop floor level the cost model for this e axel assembly layout is specified over here the individual costs for technologies are not being depicted as it is of high confidentiality but the general costs and the overall costs have been have been displayed in a flowchart over here the EXL price has a profits of 20% and the overhead overhead costs of 12% we have the labor costs machine costs the adaptive technology costs material costs and the development costs the adaptive technologies as mentioned before are only of four or five technologies that have been realized hence this cost model has been developed based on this the labor costs uh, and the machine costs are the machine costs are the most uh, high cost in this EXL assembly layout detailed description of this cost model has been provided in the paper the methodology followed over here is, is uh, a unique one we have the product analysis and the adaptive technologies that have been selected and studied and have been published then a feasibility check is done which of which technologies must can be implemented the initial implementation is followed in the assembly layout with uh, also the layout formation then the MTM that is methods time measurement is done for individual assembly tasks to find the ideal times for assembly the simulation is done in technomatics and finally the implementation costing and full implementation post the implementation we have the FMEA and LOA analysis which I will be explaining in the results section and also a feedback system of course to provide to provide constant improvement to the uh, to the assembly line the clustering of tasks this is quite an important step as specific tasks in EXL have been clustered into different stations as I mentioned before in earlier slides that EXLs have a huge variety even more than an IC engine so we need to cluster specific tasks that all EXLs are have in common. So for example, we have we have studied over um, 30 to 40 EXLs and clustered these tasks. That is pre-station, pre-assembly stations. We have interference fitting that has been done in motor pre-assembly. That is stator and rotor assembly is followed and then uh, the transmission assembly closing station the EUL test station is nothing but the end of line test where uh, the EXL is tested connected and disconnected using a special equipment and machinery the universal station is placed on station 7 which of which op operates as a buffer station or rework station and for special operations that is sealing operations or uh, bolting operations that are required for specific e axles the complexity and necessary equipment is also shown in the last two columns the results of these works uh, can are described in the next section before i move on to the next section i would like to say that uh, the clustering of tasks, the methodology followed, and the other topics have been have been elaborately described in the paper. I could not go in detail in this presentation due to the time limit. The simulation analysis, the simulation was done in Siemens Technomatics PLM software. 
so it is a quite quite helpful software and I have seen that um, in MMS 2019 as well that most uh, two or three of the papers were focusing on Siemens technomatics. Uh, the simulation study indicates each uh, technology of how much of productivity could be increased with this technology decrease in rework and the throughput so as you can see that statics with the help of static screen we could achieve an increase in productivity of 4.6 percent and the throughput is increased to 4041 so we developed the Siemens technomatics uh, Siemens Technomatics model for all the technologies combined over here. The static screen, pick to light, pick to voice, hybrid system, and combined technologies. We found a considerable, a considerable increase when the technologies have been all these technologies have been combined and realized on the assembly line. So all this was put into realization on the assembly line, and an FAMEA analysis was done. Uh, for the for the parts so before implementing these technologies a before study was done where the rpn number indic was quite high and after the implementation of specific technologies for specific errors the rpn number considerably considerably decreased by 60 to 70 percent as you can see over here this is quite a drastic increase uh, in quality and throughput that we have achieved the level of automation that is the automation level was z almost zero has been increased between three to four Be as you can see from this LOA graph that has been developed over here it, it is a graph of physical automation versus the informative automation so the totally manual errors of uh, totally manual operations of 46 and 15 have been reduced to 15 to 2 operations all have been pushed to the automatic side or the aut higher automation level it, this, this methodology is derived from the Dynamo++ methodology. So what can we conclude? We have increased the adaptivity, we have increased the level of automation, the errors have been considerably decreased as we can see from the RPN numbers. A cost benefit can be seen the newly defined classification metrics of e-axles along with the methodology. This is quite new approach that has been followed and developed over the past few months. This approach can also be used for any low volume production. The further study is also being done that is building a complete system architecture combining all the technologies and implementing further cognitive technologies as in the L, as in the matrix that has been published. So my name is Moaz Abdul Hadi and I work over here as a researcher. This is my address and feel free to contact me if you have any queries. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, let me present the paper design of simulation workplace for quality evaluation using clean principles and vision system. Authors Stella Hadelva and Davina Matiskova. We come from the Technical University of Košice, Faculty of Manufacturing Technologies, with seat in Treshov, Slovakia. The presentation is divided into the next part. Introduction, Methods and Tools, Design of Workspace and Conclusion. Introduction. The very rapid development of measurement of information technologies makes it possible to use highly intelligent systems based on communication with digital data networks. Several internal quality assessment systems are already in use to identify non compliant products. The goal of such system is to eliminate products that do not meet the specified customer requirements. One of the significant tools for reducing losses in manufacturing the company is the lean philosophy. The result is a net improvement in overall productivity and a reduction in losses due to poor production. That is described the design of an experimental workplace equipment with a camera system to monitor the achieved quality of the production process. They will use the principles of statistical quality evaluation to achieve the quality. In order to eliminate the losses generated by pure quality production, the paper will propose a real production approach. Workplace design will be created in technomatics plan simulation. Methods we will use the methods of tools of statistical process control. Statistical process control is the application of statistical methods to monitor and control the process to ensure that the process is stable. According to statistical process control, the process behaves predictably to produce the most satisfactory product with the least possible waste. We assume the individual measurement chart which is appropriate when only one measurement is available for each group and the data are normally distributed. Based on the decision-making process to eliminate non complete products, we choose the principles of shared control charts. Shared control chart utilizes the principle of statistical significance test and graphically displayed process variability. In consists of lower control limit, we can see the equation of calculation, this limit, central line and upper control limit. Between the upper control limit and the lower control limit uh, should be the measurement uh, points. If the points are uh, between upper control limit and lower control limit, process is good but the points are up the upper control limit or, or um, allow the lower control limit it means that the process uh, has uh, some problems. The next part uh, represents the sum parts of uh, equation for calculation lower and upper control limits. The next tool uh, will use a uh, vision system. Industrial automation systems are mostly designed to check known object in fixed position, characterize item defects, and take steps to report and eliminate these defects and replace or remove defective parts from the production line. Industrial vision systems are described as a computer system where the software performs tasks to acquire, process, analyze, and understand digital images. They are usually focused on industrial quality assurance, defect detection, pattern recognition, etc. These systems are used in all industries and are an essential part of achieving efficiency and high standards of uh, quality. Uh, 
the figure one represent the common um, general uh, system of geometric measurement via vision system and the figure two represent the real considered camera gains. The next tool uh, was used uh, in philosophy. Real manufacturing is the direction of management that ensures the competitiveness of business by producing product, providing services in the uh, quantity needed for the customer with high quality, minimal resource cost and low cost. It is primarily the effort of the whole organization to continuously improve in all areas and avoid unnecessary waste. The main goal of lean manufacturing is to reduce or eliminate all types of losses in the production process. Losses are characterized as all shares to do not create value for consumer. The tools of lean is uh, Hidoka as well. Hidoka is one of the strong pillars of the Toyota production system. It helps prevent errors in the manufacturing process, identifies error areas and suggests solutions to ensure elimination of problems and not to occur the same fault again. The IDOCA is stopping the system. It can consist of the two tasks. Separation of man from machine, concept of created 100% quality and any time throughout the process without the need for the future control. This means that the key product parameters are checked and evaluated during the process. The picture represents the common principle of IDOCA. It is a process that is designed to hard work the moment a problem is detected. Hidoka as a technique gives machines and operators the ability to detect when unusual conditions have occurred and stop work immediately. The next tool is Andon. The Andon device is traditionally used in the manufacturing industry. This visual management tool shows the status of operation in an area and signalizes the occurrence of abnormalities. The implementation of this system is production can reduce the number of non compliant products. Individual signals for the use of Andron will be based on specified control limits calculated according to the statistical quality control procedures. The Technomatics plan simulation is the application system which uh, will, uh, will be used um, for uh, preparation design of a workplace. Technomatics plan simulation allows the modeling and simulation of manufacturing systems. It is an objective oriented 3D program used to simulate discrete events, which allows to quickly and intuitively create realistic digital logistic systems, for example, production and thus test the properties of the system and optimize their performance. The picture is represented the uh, designed uh, factory simulated in this application system. Design on workplace. That will be used the following assumption for workplace design. We assume the repeated production. Tolerance limits, upper specification limit, lower specification limit, upper control limit, and lower control limit are available for individual product types. Therefore, they can be loaded into the system. The production process is under the statistical control. No significant fluctuations are expanded. On the picture, we can uh, see the parts of this um, workplace. It is a camera, hand on line 1, line 2, and straw. The next time, uh, slide will describe how this workplace works. If the measure value is within the control limit, it will go to the next operation, line 1, or the process will end. If the measurement value exceeds the upper or lower control limit, the product passes through the line to conveyor and is stored in the store. 
Exciting the upper or lower control limit does not mean that the product is not within the required tolerance, but there is a risk that it will not meet customer requirements. It would also be advisable to set a counter to count the number of such deviations. In case they occur in a large number, it is advisable to stop respectively signal processor. These deviations may occur, for example, by booting the tool or by changing the stability of the machine sampling. If the measurement value is outside the upper specification limit or lower specification limit exceeded deviation according to the technical documentation, it means that the product does not meet the customer's requirements. In this case, the machine stops and the red line comes on. It is a signal to the operator to determine the cause of the fault. Technomatics plan simulation tools can be used to test the management of individual system elements, such as the machine itself, the camera system, the PLC and add-on. This would ensure online monitoring of the quality of the required indicator and thus the fulfillment of production quality requirements. Computer simulation performed by available software tools using uh, IT tools optimize the work and performance of production land as well as other production and logistics processes. Computer models enable businesses to run simulations without disrupting real-world system and find optimal solution to problems. The advantage of introducing the philosophy of Trin and Andon in the compilation of the control workplace can be considered to ensure that the following conditions are met. Machine operators are not tied to one machine, but can provide control of several machines. The system itself signals a deviation from the normal state. The required parameter values are monitored directly during production. When the limits are exceeded, and on signal this condition or the line is stopped. In order to meet the required goals, it is necessary to precisely, uh, precisely specify the method of evaluation of the required parameters and the interconnection of all components of the workplace. In the, the initial phase, this can be time-consuming to run a test given workplace. It can be uh, such as one uh, on disadvantages of this uh, way to design the workplace. Thank you for your attention.
dear participants of the conference, my name is Angelina Jakovic and I'd like to present the research of our faculty aimed on employer training programs for small and medium-sized manufacturing enterprises. High-quality staff training for manufacturing enterprises is a key success factor, given the fact that the modern trends require a quick response to changing market conditions, there is a need to work quick and highly quality staff training. Manufacturing enterprises are increasingly use the latest technologies, which requires highly qualified personnel. The problem with the training and selection of qualified staff is especially acute in small and medium-sized enterprises. Such enterprises try to compete with the large ones by introducing the latest technologies in production process. Any technical and technological innovation require training and retraining of existing staff and often search for a new one. Any small and medium-sized enterprises strives to get a large market share, which requires more human sources, even the most of production processes are automated. Modern requires for manufacturing enterprises include improvement of the newest technologies, the use of more productive equipment, automation of production processes, providing the inline production, and so on and so on. Introducing technologies of Industry 4.0, enterprises are faced with lack of skilled labor, lack of highly specialized employers in the labor market, the need for training and retraining personnel. Small and medium-sized enterprises has one more problem as a lack of financial and human sources to organize process of training and retraining personnel. To get in the deep of the problem, let's look Let's take a look to a table of main training methods. There is internal and external one. Internal methods include instructor-lead classroom training, hands-on training, coaching, and mentoring. External methods include interactive methods, small group discussions, case study reviews, role-playing, quizzes, and demonstrations also include computer-based training and e-learning. All methods have their own process and concepts. Internal method process include easy to create, trainer can help to build good team relationships. Internal training is suitable for both new and existing employees. The courses also level up the knowledge of tutors and help them to improve it. Concepts of internal methods are internal knowledge has its limits and every industry changing rapidly and trainers should react on it also rapidly. External method process are often held by experts from the external companies. Such trainers can be more experienced and it can be also held online. External training offers a fresh view on the situation. Concepts of external methods include External training is more expensive. It took more time than internal way. If managers choose online training, should remember that such courses often are limited by terms and time of delivery. Based on information from the table, we decided to compare the mentoring and hands-on training from the internal methods and interactive methods of completing of study materials from external ones. For experiment, we were selected two enterprises with the similar features as Number of permanent production employees is up to 50 people for work shift. Mass production, which depends on season. In the season of a large number of orders, hires temporary staff. Age group of production workers 
is up from 25 years old to 70 years old people. One on or two employers are engaged in training process. Working day lasts eight hours. A large train range of production that's constantly changing and situated in Slovak Republic. Any company in need of employers applies to Ministry of Labor. Since the study at enterprises are training new and permanent personnel, a group of trainees should be identified. The employment rate in Slovakia has increased over the past year, but it's still not critical and it can, it can be seen from the graph. After analyzing the age structure of unemployment people in Slovakia, it becomes obvious that the majority of unemployment people are in the age group from 25 to 54 years old. This age group consists of active users of mobile devices such as smartphones, tablets, smartwatches and so on. It can be seen from the histogram smartphone owners by the age group. This fact open up the prospect of introducing smartphones or tablets as a storage of studying materials for personal training. The research determinate the main requires for studying materials such as minimum text, visualization of actions, the ability to have training materials at hand, easy of use, the possibility of modernization and price of realization. Tools of realization can be seen on a picture. There is photos of pictures, GIFs and videos, tablets, PowerPoint, format files, PPT, 100 euros for tablet and 20 euros for holder. Summarizing proposed solution, it is possible to highlight some process and concepts of solution. The process were easy to use, suitable for groups of different ages. Workflow visualization reduces the use of paper documentation, multifunctional use of device, reduces downtimes, ability to use reading data from sensors, and so on, disinfection possibility. The, the concerns of proposed solution includes requires char charging and recharging of electrical devices and at the stage of use without multifunctional application, it requires the employee to have skills of using individual applications. In the future, it requires of implementation server or cloud storage to quick exchange and updating data. In practice, this solution helped and selected enterprises reduce the number of paper-based training materials, simplifies the process of perceiving text information by employees, make possible to use smart devices habitual, reduce the training time and downtime link it with it from 1 hour 30 minutes to 30 minutes. All these changes have increased the productivity of employers and as a result productivity of the enterprise. Made it possible to disinfect surface with become especially important in onset of the pandemic. The use of mobile devices also prepared the staff to the next stage of introducing industry for zero technologies, namely the implementation of mobile application or Internet of Things and other software solutions for manufacturing process popular today. As a conclusion can be said that the perspectives of implementation of mobile devices and video animated instructions in learning process in the future will allow to provide self-guided 
learning on workers' own schedule, online learning, bread training, post training, field-based skills demonstration of evaluations, on the job performance support, training for employers, and quickly and early instant updates of employers. The use of mobile devices can reduce the time of reports training as well as informing employers the phase that modernization of small and medium-sized enterprises is very important since such enterprises are very valuable to their employers and do not always have the financial sources for a large investment in the latest technologies. Thank you for your attention.
Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Olena Sivakovska. I am an associate professor at Lutsk National Technical University in Ukraine. The theme of our report is modeling and management of the technical and technological potential for the agricultural sector. The effectiveness and competitive ability of the agriculture largely depends on the technical and technological potential. It defines by the condition of technologies and the techniques which are used in process of some manufacturing. Every year farmers solve many management problems. They are the nomenclature of cultivated and harvesting crops, their varieties and hybrids, production technologies, timely and qualitative implementation of mechanized operation and their technical and resources support and so on. Trying to solve this problem is trying to make true management solution. With the help of this, the manufacturing will be successful. Unfortunately, the experience has shown that these project tasks are decided intuitively, without a special substantiation. The main problem of this is the absence of scientifically grounded methods which decided these tasks and they make some scientific and applied problems. The farmers consider the agriculture manufacturing on the basis of the systems approach. It includes two main systems, technical and technological systems that and organizational and technical system or management system U. Scheme of the systems for the agricultural manufacturer is described in figure 1. Each component executes some function which all together provide the agricultural manufacturing. In this case, the technical and technological system makes qualitative transformation of labor objects, for example, ground, seeds, and so on. And the organizational and technical system provide the forming of conditions for qualitative and efficient transformation of this project. Qualitative transformation of this labor object take place organized with the help of some technologies. They make separate projects, programs and portfolios in the section of separate fields, agricultural crops and kinds of project work. The managing of these projects, programs and portfolios are realized by management systems U, which consist of managers and decision support system DSS. Managers make decision and managing difficult situation with the help of DSS and they prove decision in reference to the initiation of some commands for doing agricultural projects on the basis of FISU. These commands can concern input streams of the manufacturing contract for agricultural project X, parameters of TTSZ, and the resources provision for projects R. On going into the matter, we can confirm that parameters of system Z and U have some connections between them which must be allowed in the creation of agricultural project. This connection will be called internal system connection, which we can write down in the implicit aspect. It is described by Formula 1. The expression showed the systematic tax of synthesis for a set of arguments which determine parameters of some agriculture outputs. Problems of analysis and synthesis are solved for defining parameters of TTS and OTS. Separately, one of the, the, the first problems of this analysis is the task of the determining compli, complaints between characteristics of input streams of the manufacturing context for agricultural projects X and parameters TTS or Z. The determination of these complaints is one of main functions of OTS or U. In this case, we don't deep, deeply prove the methods of the determined compliance between X and Z. So, here the cost is X and the result is Z. That's why we can write down the compliance of parameter TTS from the characteristic X in the implicit aspect. The formula to describe it. The complex is rebuilt uh, on the condition that all systematic parts are fixed and they are included to the expression 2 and the attainment of the extreme value y. Simultaneously, it defines requirements to information follow e.
IX, IZ, IY, and causes parameter OTS or U. These functions are represented by formula 3. The managing of the technical and technological potential is possible on the condition that the identification of agriculture projects, programs, and portfolios will be based on many features. For the identification of agriculture projects, programs, and portfolios, and disclosure of these features, at first we must show that they are objectively determined by meteorological conditions which are, aren't controlled by people. They are uh, cyclically changed over time and cause their life cycles. In this case, meteorological cycles are one of the reasons we determine kinds and deadlines of projects, programs, and portfolios. So, kind of agricultural projects are one of the features of, of their identification. The next feature of the identification of agricultural projects is crops which are grown and gathered in some natural production conditions. The agricultural manufacture is carried out on separate fields which are characterized by the type of soil and many geometrical parameters, for example, area at some one. So, the agricultural manufacture is carried out the separate fields which are characterized by type of the soil and many geometrical parameters, a slope of the horizontal line and so on. In our research, the set of agricultural projects with using crops is called programs because they are technologically dependent. In this case, project works are divided into several seven types. Soil tillage, fertilization, sowing, care of crops, harvesting, transporting, post-harvest handling, and crop storage. Each of these projects is technologically connected with the previous and next project. So they all together make a program of the agriculture manufacturing according to the present field. These projects are created gradually over time. According to manufacturing pro programs of agriculture products on separate fields, we can point out portfolios of projects. They are created with the help of the merge of projects in set in relation to dif different fields. In this case, is each of these projects is an independent from other. The, pe the peculiarity of each project is the start time of its creating that is determined by biological feature of crops and me meteorological condition of each year. Let us approach it, each agricultural project as a system. We can separate of its uh, security, CSS. Indexes of this security are determined as indexes of outputs and consumptions of resources and the energy of its manufacturing. These features are dependent on many factors which reflect all main, main system parts of projects, programs, and portfolios. In this case, these factors are united factors group. Separately, there are main factors objective soil, objective plant, agro-meteorological, manufacturing, technological, technical, organizational scale, social, material resource, energetic resource, standard quality, financial, management. Relation of these factors are represented by formula 4. Let us determine the essence of each factor groups of measures of project wars, programs and portfolio in the agriculture. The objective soil factor group, for example, OS, represented the quality of the soil cover over field. The objective plant is a necessary part of the object soil. It is determined by kinds and classes of crops which are in the field and their yield capacity. The important factor group of measures of agricultural project wars, programs and portfolios is a is the agriculture factor group. The technological factor group is the necessary part of factor groups of measures of agricultural projects, wars, programs, and portfolios. Technical means which are used for realizing work in agricultural projects represent the technical factor group of measures of agricultural projects, wars. The organizational scale factor groups representing scale of the agricultural production of the same 
farmers. The material resources factor groups is characterized by the nomenclature and volumes of material and technical and material and technological resources which are necessary for the manufacturing. The energetic resource factor group is represented by energetic resources which are used for the realization of agricultural programs and projects. The quality factor groups of value consist in the security of quality agricultural outputs. The management factor groups of measures of project worth belongs to the main factor group too. It is represented by many features separately the number of management personnel, for example managers, and the availability of technical means, and so on, which are parameters of OTS. Events of start time of these programs are determined by some set in fields for each program of the crop growing. With the first project are projects of the preparation of fields uh, to the seed time of crops. The start time of this project are determined by physical condition of the soil and the season which causes optimal agrometeorological terms of project's creation. So we can determine three typical events for each separated fields. The crop which can be grown in the field, the optional optimal agrometeorological technical term preparation of the soil of the seed time and the moment of the time beginning of the soil condition which is acceptable for doing mechanized operations. The projects are based on mechanized technology, technological projects which are done by operators with the help of some technical means. So, events which are in these processes belong to the social and technical factor groups. Separately, there are these events. Stoppage through physiological needs of the executors, the launching of processes after these stoppages, stoppages through the technical and technical abandonments of mechanic units, the launching of the processes after the eliminated abdomens, stoppage of the processes for technological refills of mechanic units, the launching of these processes, stoppage of processes for the unlounging bunkers of combined harvesters and the launching of this process. Besides of the process, mechanized technological process determines such components as the movement of mechanized aggregates and the fields and their relevance at the end of horns. These components provide processes of doing which are realized in project of the soil preparation and seed time of crops, care of crops, harvesting, post-harvest handling and yardage. The modeling each of them has some peculiarities which are used by applied technological and technical means. The stochastic action of agrometeorological conditions predetermines the possible char characters of the majority of events and mechanized work in agricultural projects. So, the model adequacy of agricultural projects, programs and portfolios is achieved through using the method of statistic and imitation modeling. It provides a multiply implementation of different agricultural projects with the help of the stochastic influence for agrometeorological conditions and possible co occurrence of main events and given parameters of technical and technological equipment. The number of the realized models of projects is based on the analysis of theoretical laws of distribution of random vari variables which characterize possible events. If we don't deeply stop attention on the future of this model, we can single out three main step stages which were developed by us. There are system and design step, value factor step, and system and event step. These steps are a methodological basis of this modeling. As a result of statistical and imitation modeling, we can get some functional indexes for the realization of project programs and portfolios. There are amounts of timely and untimely executed mechanized works, project lifetime cycles, operational expenses of human, energetic material and technical resources, and a using coefficient for fund 
of time for machine units. Each of these indexes is characterized by some the theoretical division and appropriate assumption assumptions uh, of its parameters. The, dependence, uh, the dependency assessments of these parameters and assessments of ma mathematical expectation from parameters of technical and technological equipment in agricultural project is the main basis to substitute management decision for changing parameters of this equipment. Opposing trend such fact, uh, functional indexes change of project as amount of untimely executed works and a using coefficient for fund of time for machine units help to determine re, uh, rational parameters of this equipment. To this end, each of these functional indicators is assessed in the value of energy equi equivalent, the minimum percentage which belong to 1 H1 CWT total loss volume through the untimely executed mechanized works and cost of uh, crying out mechanized technologies process corresponds to the, to the rational parameters of technical and technological equipment in agricultural projects. The management of technical and technological potential is carried out mainly on the basis of deterministic models, which don't take into account the stochastic effect of agrometeorological condition. It has necess uh, it had necessary the development of new principle of modeling and management of agriculture. Project programs and portfolios are considered as a technological system in the agricultural modeling. The systematic view could determine task of analysis and synthesis of the systems. The second stage was the definition and conceptual disclosure of the factor modeling of the value for agricultural projects, programs, and portfolios. Determine three stages of the process of making of model of agricultural projects, programs, and portfolios are meteorological basis of the corresponding research and they can minimize the risk of the subjective managing decision from their technical and technological equipment. The disclosure of me methodological peculiarities of this creation of the project programs and portfolio on each steps of their research make it possible for the substitution of methodological of the creation model for corresponding mechanics, mechanized technological process and system. Stochastic influence of agrotomological conditions and the third time of programs for cultivated and harvesting growth and development of crops is the basic for the choice of the statistical imitation method of modeling for agricultural projects, programs, and portfolios, which the purpose of the managing of their technical and technological potential. Results of this modeling are functional indexes of projects, programs, and portfolios. Their cost and energetic value can prove provide rational parameters of technical and technological equipment and make many managerial decision problems. The future decision of this research is disclosure of system principles or creation of automated organizational and technical system in agricultural project management. The creation of organizational and technical system or automated project and program management should be based on the research results of management objects and management systems. This research are based on the relationship between technological and organizational and technical system. This system depends on their functional purpose and inter-system inter interactions. The systematic disclosure of interaction technological and organizational and technical system could identify inter-system interactions which are determined by management object and the content of management tasks. Solving project management problems of technological system requires the modeling that must be based on Monte Carlo method for projects of technological system in agriculture.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tomasz Mandyczak and I come from Slovakia, from Faculty of Civil Engineering at Technical University of Košice. I would like to present a very important and uh, interesting issue with the title customization of BIM educational process uh, during the COVID-19 crisis at the Department of Technology, Economics and Management in Construction at Faculty of Civil Engineering in Košice. My presentation will be uh, divided into three parts. First of all, it's a theoretical background and problem statement. Next, very important, it's methodology or results and discussion about this topic. And last one, it's a conclusion and some findings of this research. The current time is marked by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has paralyzed the functioning of several sectors uh, under the conditions uh, of the current situation, for example, in Slovakia, in Europe, in other countries, industry and uh, production uh, fields were largely paralyzed. paralyzed. Uh, for example, automotive uh, industry and construction industry and so on. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has paralyzed the functioning of several sectors uh, and it includes, of course, education process too. European countries have taken various measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, which have resulted uh, in the problematic functioning of several spheres. Construction industry in Slovakia is also showing signs of a slow, a slow down in the production and it's uh, also budgeting uh, to have a negative impact on unemployment and other microeconomics uh, indicators. Uh, the current and current situation in the world requires much more innovative or much more innovation uh, in every area than ever before. Uh, innovations in materials or specific uh, technologies are very much uh, needed in this time. Uh, the need for ICT training for industry has been of great importance over the last uh, few decades. And the situation caused by the pandemic, COVID-19 only, uh, emphasized these many needs. Uh, the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Technical University of Košice has long uh, sought to apply uh, the maximum possible uh, level of ICT from the educational process. He also tries to bring uh, BIM technology closer to the students. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought widespread restriction and change that means the interruption of the full-time form or uh, of study at each level of study, uh, which represents complication, but at the same time, uh, new technologies for setting up the functioning uh, of the given processes. The field of construction has long demanded uh, to the teaching of, of BIM technologies for practice. The level of customization in the field of uh, BIM technology education must identify, identify uh, during uh, the current situation. The main goal of this research is to set, as described, the customization of teaching uh, BIM technologies at Department of Technology, Economics and Management in Construction at Faculty of Civil Engineering in Košice. Mass customization is characterized by high flexibility in the production process. Customers directly influence the properties uh, of the product. Uh, mass customization is the ability to design and manufacture a customized uh, products while um, maintaining the same level of efficiency and speed of the production process uh, in a mass customization. We know several types of customization, especially in the table, uh, or as you can see in table one, uh, that means the types of customization. First of all, it's a transparent uh, customization. Uh, that means the aim of this method of customization is to deliver products uh, to measure while uh, the customer uh, is not aware that the products are adapted directly to him. Uh, next type is adaptive customization. 
Uh, that means the aim of this type of customization is to adapt uh, the standardized uh, products to the needs of producers or consumer. Uh, the settings of the product are additional change without changing uh, the final product or the final presentation of this uh, product. And uh, next, it's a collaborative customization. That means this type of customization represents the most perfect strategy. It means the customer uh, acts directly into the production process and precisely specifies his uh, needs or requirements. And last one is a cosmetic customization. That means it's type of customization uh, in which the product itself does not change or uh, some little, little changes, uh, especially in a presentation. That's all. Uh, competition is increasingly being uh, perceived among educational institutions as well. The aim of, of university is to provide the best possibilities uh, environment uh, for increasing uh, the expertise and experience of their students. Uh, for this purpose, uh, several uh, innovative approaches and uh, strategies are uh, introduced into the educational process, which individual uh, universities uh, implement uh, and incorporate into the educational process. The aim of individual universities is to adapt educational to the needs of students uh, as much as possible. It's uh, therefore very important to support uh, all students' uh, willingness uh, in improving and adapting uh, to the educational process. Despite uh, the growing competitive environment, schools manage their education system in the same way uh, as they did uh, 50 years ago. But uh, there are many ways to differentiate and individualization of educational process as much as uh, possible for this, this university. Uh, based uh, on the research, we have four elements uh, in the class were defi defined. Uh, as you can see in picture number one, uh, first is a content, next is a process, uh, next product, and last one is a learning environment or educational. Uh, first of all, that means the content. Uh, content is very important. Uh, what the student must learn and how to obtain this information. That means it's uh, access to information and uh, very important information for students and for uh, teaching process. Uh, next is uh, process. It means it's a set of activities um, in which the student is involved in order to manage and understand the content. Next is a product. Uh, that means it's uh, it's output, and their aim is to stimulate students practicing, applying, and uh, this is main thing uh, knowledge. And last one and the final step is a learning environment. That means creating an engaging uh, way of um, teaching and creative environment. Uh, customization of BIM educational process at the study program of technology and management in the building industry. There are some future or, or results. Uh, the study, the future of education, brought the following findings. First of all, that means uh, some uh, characteristics about uh, uh, some physical requirements in the classroom. 50% of students not need to be physically present in the classroom. A lot of the students prefer online teaching. 53% per percent, uh, of students prefer the so-called online education or distance education, but not the presentation education. 39% uh, of students uh, expect the start of the so-called virtual education in, in next period, next, next years. Up to 84% of students use PC where studying, 19% of students use a 
tablet uh, and uh, mobile for smartphone to study. 43% of students state that online education is education for the same or uh, higher quality as a traditional higher education, what is a very important finding for, for this. 78% uh, of students state that online learning is more demanding uh, than educational in a traditional classroom. And last one, 63% of students would be interested uh, in the so-called online internships. Uh, the faculty offers uh, 18 study programs in three level of study, it means in bachelor, master and PhD studies. Uh, the faculty is one of the leading educational institutions, uh, as many as 89.5% uh, of graduates will find employment with one year after graduation. Uh, on the picture you can see um, all study programs and uh, some level of uh, this study. That means in the bachelor study, master study, PhD or doctoral study. Uh, and you can see in the picture, uh, but uh, in, in every, every level of education, uh, we have more study programs, more than, than one. Many innovative uh, teaching methods are used uh, in an educational process. Uh, undoubtedly, such innovative teaching methods include the use of mass customization, transparent uh, customization. The aim of transparent uh, customization uh, is to provide students with the product and services uh, that are tailor made uh, for them while students are unaware of the targeted profiling for, of, of education. Faculty support the use of progressive technology such as 3D laser scanning, 3D printer, uh, virtual reality tools, augmented reality, mixed reality, and not the last one, it's uh, building information modeling in education process and it's very important for this. Uh, but of course, and some other new innovative software solutions, for example, for cost, ma cost management in faculty, uh, in uh, construction industry and so on. Students of the study field of technology and management in construction participate in the prep, um, preparation and implementation of construction building information modeling technologies increasingly being used in this space. The result of work in the environment of uh, information modeling of buildings is a model of an object that contain graphic and non-graphic uh, information. Generally, building information modeling is the process of creating uh, and managing digital, uh, digital uh, characteristic inf the building information models uh, are files that uh, can be extracted, exchanged and networked. Uh, the aim is to connect the support decision making. BIM is a source of knowledge and information that uh, forms the basis for decision making during the life cycle of, of building. Uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, individual information can be considered uh, as individual dimension of information modeling of buildings. Uh, the 3D model uh, is uh, the car uh, carrier of graphic information of the object. The model has time parameters, that means for D, uh, that means time. Next is cost parameters, so-called uh, 5D. And the next information of sustainability, uh, that means a 6D. And the last one is a 7D, that means a facility management. Uh, education and fa at Faculty of Civil Engineering changed its form during the COVID-19 uh, crisis. The faculty uh, moved from the full-time form of study to the distance form of study. The use of various cloud uh, technologies shared that the basis social network teamwork between students and uh, the faculty is supported to a greater extent. That means the use of BIM software solutions or applications 
creates online training of these applications and provides students with the school licenses for select uh, applications. The faculty has created an uh, online account for each teacher in Cisco WebEx portals through which all subjects uh, are taught. Uh, all LMS uh, are applications uh that integrate various online tools for communications and study management discussion forums uh, chat rooms records uh, and so on and make available to students teaching materials and online or offline teaching uh, tools for example and uh, which is a uh, very important tools of uh, using faculty of civil engineering in this uh, study program it was a Cisco Webex when I when I said and uh, some supported tool for uh, document management and uh, document exchange uh, it was uh, 2k Moodle Moodle platform uh, that means information about great meeting is also shared in the portals Moodle took which represents the learning management system uh, at this university and, and faculty and so on in this uh, uh, education study. Uh, teamwork is encouraged for students in the last years of master studies. The study subject team project is created on which students uh, of uh, individual fields of study cooperate, uh, cooperate with uh, each other within the subject. Students solve uh, the assignment, uh, the project. The aim of the faculty is to support the connection of study with the experience with practice and so on uh, therefore projects are selected from external contractors whether uh, private companies or the public sector currently students are working on a project to restore the house of culture in Svidnik is one of uh, most uh, important uh, and practice uh, projects for our students in, in this time. Individual team members work up their part of the project in BIM software applications. Teaching takes place online. Individual teams members, students, investors, and tutors uh, communicate and share their solution ideas through the WebEx platform. The, advent, the advantage of a given online conversation is the ability to record video and audio, which leads to perfect recording uh, of all uh, simulation, whether by students, uh, investors, uh, or tutors, and so on. The result uh, of the, this cooperation is a presentation of project documentation for the construction technical equipment of buildings, uh, static solutions, environmental assessment of the building, and the same time, a work shuttle, construction budget, and uh, generally cost management and construction organization project are compiled. The customization, uh, the customization of the teaching process will also add a, a, another, another uh, subject, for example, economic information systems. This course was the first to start online teaching since uh, the first week, and uh, the online form is uh, suitable for this subject, and it was not problematic to provide the entire contact to, to the online environment. During one lecture, students also attend a webinar with the partner's company, uh, company Cross, uh, which is a leading company in the field of development and production of construction and economic software. As you can see in the pictures, uh, first or second picture, there are some uh, softwares uh, supported uh, for educational process and it must be screening uh, from, from desktop uh, to the, all students and it can possible uh see and learning from 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 this uh this destructment uh, some conclusions are, are findings uh, divided in some points uh, first of all the issue of customization and uh, educational processes is much needed and requirement um, topic that needs to be addressed 
study program of technology and management in the building industry study program showed a high degree of flexibility and adaptability, what is very positive uh, in this, in this uh, pandemic time. And the last one, the rate of customization is slightly higher due the, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and subsequent uh, measures in securing the teaching process. This is where the need uh, for customization and the advantage uh, of its application in the field of education was confirmed. What is a positive or main important uh, point of these uh, research results? Thank you very much uh, for your attention.
ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tomáš Vandičák and I come from Slovakia, from Technical University of Košice Faculty of Civil Engineering. I would like to present uh, my paper, research paper, uh, with title Impact of COVID-19 on the use of innovative uh, technologies in the construction project management. Our presentation uh, is divided in the four parts. That means, uh, first of all, it's theoretical background and the problem statement. Next, uh, I will say by, about uh, methodology and uh, research uh, steps. And uh, next, uh, it will be um, results and discussion. And last one, it's uh, part of conclusion and some findings of this research. Uh, Construction project management uh, or CPM shortcut is a complex process that must be supported by innovative technologies. Innovative technologies have several indisputable uh, advantages that uh, have a positive effect on efficiency and productivity. Implementing innovative technologies is a demanding process and does not uh, always grow as fast as needs. The current situation is new in the world and uh, the effects of COVID-19 uh, pandemic are changing the functioning uh, of common areas, but also companies, manufacturing industry and construction industry uh, too. In general, the implementation of innovative technologies entails certain capital expanders uh, that the construction sector or construction industry is uh, not always able to allocate in the required for uh, several studies uh, have shown that the, one of the reasons for the low level of implementation of innovative technologies in construction. Uh, from this, it's a uh, first uh, high cost uh, associated with implementation and uh, next is physiological barriers or technical barriers and uh, uh, in the form of rejection of the new technology and changes in, in generally between people and uh, something new. Uh, the implementation and the use of in new innovative technologies are influenced by several factors, for example, cost, personal issue, fundamental and environmental phenomena uh, is uh, the same. Mm, the current situation has brought uh, many changes, but uh, must be taken into account when uh, managing construction companies and uh, Construction project management is a demanding set of activities that uh, has several phases. Effective management uh, begins uh, with the right planning and this, uh, the pre-project stage or phase. Uh, this process requires a number of innovative technologies to facilitate uh, the streamlined uh, management of construction projects. Uh, there are some questions. First of all, it's uh, what is the impact of the current situation on the use of uh, innovative technologies? The research carried about uh, during the months of the March and April when measures against the spread of COVID-19 are the most intensive in Slovakia and also deals with the use of these technologies. Uh, Based on this uh, or theoretical background, it was said uh, our assumption of this research, it was that uh, the utilization rate or exploitation rate uh, is different than in the pre-crisis period, that means between, between, between uh, crisis and between situation of pandemic uh, in this time. Um, developments uh, in the construction project management are influenced by innovative and new technologies. New modern technologies and systems uh, represent uh, innovative solutions that bring uh, several uh, benefits such as uh, shortening uh, the construction time, eliminating unwanted consequences and supporting the adoption of uh, complex uh, uh, system solutions. The use of virtual reality brings several benefits, the most frequent being fast zoom models, that means uh, the virtual reality application and faster and more accurate creation of detailed uh, and, uh, model and uh, supports uh, the change of information, support uh, and improve collaboration, that means improve the real time uh, team collaboration and share environment. 
Next, it's improving the customer experience. Uh, that means increasing transparency, customer follow, a virtual model, just eliminating, uh, um, eliminating the risk of uh, misunderstanding the project documentation. The virtual model is constantly updated uh, in case of problems and or questions, customers can solve them immediately on in the virtual reality environment, which reduces the time required for solution and increasing efficiency of problem solving, of course. Uh, next, it's uh, support uh, for educational technology. That means a virtual reality can be used to simulate real situations uh, and to provide practical experience needed to train staff. And it's very important to, with connection from or with, uh, with our research and uh, research statement. And uh, next is cost saving or cost reducing. That means improving of the, uh, of the planning phase, elimination and of incorrect uh, understanding of project documentation and some project uh, or construction details, uh, of course. Augmented reality, uh, that means uh, allows integration of virtual elements into real environment, visualizations and environment, and we ran environmental and social impact of the project, examination of functional models, and so on. There are some benefits uh, that brings uh, of use of augmented reality. Uh, that means accuracy of construction project, financial and time-saving project management, more truth analysis of the project, improving construction processes, and uh, so on. Mixed reality. Uh, that means uh, there are some allows, that means combining real-world objects with digital content to interactive real-time tools, combines augmented reality, mixed reality, and the real world coordination of model through uh, out, uh, the life cycle of building. And there are some benefits from, from use of this uh, technology. That means, first of all, increasing, increased productivity and efficiency, or is uh, one of the assumption and uh, it's a connection with uh, our research idea. And next, it's a speed uh, up uh, the construction process and identify possible problem faster. Next, support for collaboration between the office and the site, quality assurance and control, speeding uh, up um, decision making and reducing uh, time, maximizing beam investments to monitor progress, increasing confidence and reducing staff training, and the last one's uh, ruination of, uh, of the team. Uh, next technology or innovative technology in the construction sector, that means a knowledge system, which is a very important uh, technology, uh, supported decision making and so on in every stage or in every uh, industry, uh, construction industry too. Uh, there are some allows, that means collection, organization and acquisition of knowledge and uh, artificial intelligence support tool that uh, support intelligent decision making. Uh, based on some 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 pattern, uh, there are some benefits: uh, more effective teamwork, greater certainty, and more effective decision making. Elimination of errors, eradication of duplication of work, faster and easier access to the most important and up-to-date uh, information, improving the connection between partners, projects, uh, and parts of the organization. Support for innovative thinking, uh, support to communication uh, or co of communication uh, between individual participants, and the last one, uh, increase customer satisfaction. Uh, innovative technology, for example, uh, it can uh, be or it's possible. Uh, to sign BIM technology or building information modeling. Uh, there are, or there is a process of delivering sets using well-structured digital information. The availability of digital information to all stakeholders is a priority. The BIM model is a multi-dimensional model uh, that display graphical and non-graphical information. There are some uh, XD, for example, it's 3D that it's a visualization and a physical dimension environment. 4D, there are some parameters with the time and uh, in the contents of uh, 
this research is very possible uh, or in, in important the uh, 5d that means the cost parameters uh, 6d its information is sustainability and the last one is 7d facility management actually there are some more d that it's about some area there are some benefits of using uh, this, this technology that means uh, beam technology first of all increasing labor productivity time saving uh, elimination of errors control of the whole project greater competencies and the higher profitability of the of the project uh, between innovation or innovative technology in the sector of construction uh, we can uh, uh, said that it's video conferencing too video conferencing is a technology that allows users to create so-called long distance meetings especially in this time it's a very important the joint meeting will take place without necessary transfer to a common place there are some benefits saving time cause and problems uh, that may arise during the business trip uh, is the able to connect audio and visual so which can help development now develop uh, stronger relationships no special technologies are required to conduct uh, video conferences it's enough to uh, count on a video camera and microphone or, or a smartphone or, or more other other uh, usual ICT but there are some disadvantages and uh, the social aspects and one of the advantages uh, of uh, video conferencing is uh, the require um, and um, for a stable and high quality internet connection which can be uh, quite demanding in some cases but it's the uh, next uh, point it's a uh, social social you know, content uh, of communication and uh, not possibility to communicate face to face uh, there are some uh, research uh, aim and uh, hypothesis uh, the research uh, is focused on the issue of technologies using changing in project phase and realization phase during the pandemic COVID-19 situation based on theoretical analysis and some uh, important uh, researchers uh, it was said a main research aim to analyze the impact of pandemic situation using modern technologies uh, of course, this main uh, aim was supported uh, to part uh, aims, no partial. That means check the normality uh, dependence of measured data, while comparison of changes over all types uh, of technologies and in every phase of construction separately, and pairwise uh, comparisons of these uh, groups and results arrange in rank form. Uh, next point data, data collection and the research sample all data uh, was collecting uh, by online questionnaire uh, the, the term nine uh, the answer was used a Likert scale from uh, range uh, one to point a typical scale that frequently applied by majority of researchers might be strongly agree somewhat agree not sure uh, somewhat disagree but strongly disagree uh, the extent and uh, interval values for each stage uh, of, of scale were um, truly uh, explained to, to the respondents and uh, all uh, other shortcuts and uh, other information uh, was uh, for our participants uh, detailed to describe. Uh, there are some research care uh, steps and uh, and methodology that means first of all our first st step it was to set a problem statement based on theoretical background it was set a research questions and hypothesis in the issue next it was a data collection uh, based on this uh, it was a data processing that means the normality of data data processing next uh, steps data processing uh, the normality of data had been tested and the normality assumption needs to be considered for validation of data kolmogoro smirnov test of normality it's a test for normal distribution which is leading to good results and with a small number of uh, power respondents or participants that means uh, it's it's our case uh, the desired significance level alpha in all used tests uh, in this methodology was used five percent the desired hypothesis for Kolmogorov-Smirnov test uh, 
samples hypothesis zero research sample does have a normal distribution against hypothesis uh, one research sample does not have a normal distribution most of research sample did not have a normal distribution based on this result the Kruskal-Wallis test was chosen as a non-parametric alternative to ANOVA test uh, and focused on all of groups at once. Next point or next step, it was ranking technologies according to mean and according to results of multiple comparisons. The gained uh, ranks uh, of these two approaches was compared and a little discussed uh, because of similarity these uh, ranks. The use of innovative technologies during the COVID-19 crisis in construction industry, uh, you can see in table one and table two. Uh, in table one is descriptive statistical samples and the normality test project phase or in project phase and the table, one, uh, table two it's about or in a realization phase or stage. Uh, in the first step, uh, the old types of technologies were monitored with the respect uh, of every phase. That means if Kolmogoro and Smirnov test was used to uh, determine in, uh, if the zero hypothesis of normality is responsible, uh, as enable assumption uh, regarding um, the pollution distribution of a random sample. The desired hypothesis were that uh, hypothesis zero research sample does have a normal distribution and uh, hypothesis one research sample does not uh, have a normal distribution. In three cases for every phase, the zero hypothesis was rejected and the normal and distribution was uh, not uh, detected in this case. But generally, it could not be said that uh, research data were normally distributed. Uh, so then it had been uh, used the non-parametric test in comparison of these cases. In the table one and table two, expect for normality, um, the basic characteristic is mean, standard deviation, screens, and courtoises of uh, our sample were calculated. On the next slide, uh, it was uh, the user there are some uh, tables about uh, second step that uh, when we use uh, next test, this crucial valley test, uh, these tests are provided. Uh, hypothesis zero could be rejected in both case phase. So our groups did not have the identical mean work. The last step provided also rank uh, groups, technologies according to mean for every uh, considered phase. The obtained ranks were the same. The small differences uh, were only uh, on the third and fourth positions in the using beam technology and makes the reality. Due to the small number of analyzed data, uh, it would not be some general conclusions for the use of these two technologies. All of these technologies uh, were used more in a project phase than in realization phase, positive numbers uh, in the table four in the second column. As you can see, uh, in uh, online meetings have seen the largest use increase, some boom effect, maybe it's, it's, it's beset, but between phases, which is a factor that it's observed during pandemic situation uh, generally. From this point and these results uh, and from uh, the discussion, it was set some points of conclusion or findings from, from this research. First of all, the issue uh, of using innovative technology seems to be an important topic. The current situation on a global scale is characterized by a high degree of uncertainty and change in a short time. This also forces uh, construction companies to be more flexible and willing uh, to adopt new technologies. If there was a presumption of use of perspective of different use uh, in the period before and uh, during the pandemic crisis, uh, then some of these statements proved it to be correct. However, it must be said uh, that for some technologies, they showed only a trend, but were not confirmed by exact statistical methods when, uh, when it was said. On the contrary, some innovative technologies such as communication technology supporting online communication and electronic data data exchange on inter interchange have been confirmed by statistical tests. 
the last one or last find things uh, the effects of COVID-19 were also noticeable in this area um, this probably started the process of digitalization and increased use of technologies ensuring uh, the transmission of data uh, and information support for the electronic uh, exchange and documents thank you very much for your attention
Thank you for joining this topic and the presentation of a research paper. My name is Siniša Husniak. I work at the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Transport and Traffic Sciences. I am a postdoctoral researcher and the head of the Laboratory for Security and Forensic Analysis of Information and Communication Systems. Today, we are all here to know more about possibilities of applying digital forensic techniques to unmanned aerial vehicles. I will present you our results of a research named UAV Forensics DJI Mavic Air Non-Invasive Data Extraction and Analysis. The main hypothesis and one of the aims of this research paper is which important digital artifacts can be found on the storage of the DJI Mavic Air drone and the controlling application. If you take a look at the pictures, this means that you will see two most important elements of one unmanned aerial system or UAS, which means unmanned aerial vehicle, also known as drone, and associated application in blue, DJI GO 4. In this paper, we will find out what can be found from the elements seen on the pictures. Unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, also referred to as drones in the literature, can be defined as an aircraft piloted by remote control or an onboard computer. Unmanned aerial vehicles can be considered as a part of the broader unmanned aerial system seen on the slide. Unmanned aerial system, UAS, contains more elements and encompasses unmanned aerial vehicle or drone, ground control station, controller, and associated applications like DJI GO 4, which was mentioned on previous slide and will be one of the topics of this research paper. Statistics show that unmanned aerial system technology has found widespread usage and the global drone market will grow from 14 billion dollars in year 2018 to over 43 billion dollars in year 2024. Considering the increasing popular use of drones, it is evident that there is potential for them to be used in crimes. Criminal drone operations are increasing rapidly and criminals are constantly developing new approaches. This demands forensic investigation. Drone forensics is valuable for many types of drone investigations, including commercial aerial surveillance, disruption of airports and air traffic activities, smuggling of drugs, smartphones, knives or guns, often into prisons, delivery of improvised explosive device into public places by terrorists, invasion of privacy by press or paparazzi, espionage of security and intelligence agents, etc. I assume that according to these use cases, you can see the author's motivation for this research paper. The ability of drones capturing pictures or videos of operations in 
designated non-fly zones areas of airspace such as airports, military base and power stations presents a significant security threat. This urges the research community to develop net techniques to detect and prevent illegal activities which involve unmanned area vehicles. Despite its increased importance, UAV forensics is still a relatively unexplored research topic. Commercial tools, example Celebrate, Oxygen Forensic, MSAB, are in their early stages when it comes to UAV forensics. Drones are a potential source of evidence in a digital investigation, partly due to their increasing popularity in our society. After capturing the drone, a forensic analyst, analysis can provide a lot of information about the potential suspect of a crime based on the data gathered from onboard sensors and other electronics that assist with flight and the navigation, as well as the camera and digital storage. The sample UAS, which was used in this research, is DJI Mavic Air, which consists of two main components, the UAV and the ground control station. Drones contain four general types of data that could be presented as evidence. First one are DAT files. Analysis of this data can reveal the actions of the drone during flight. For example, GPS coordinate can reveal from where the drone took off or, in the event of a crash, better levels can reveal the time when the drone failed, as it can be correlated with time. Second data source are TXT files. Despite the file name suffix TXT, these are not text files. Instead, they are binary files, has txt extension and contains a very detailed flight record. Txt type of data are stored on the mobile device which runs DJI GO 4 application. Third data source are EXIF files. The Exchangeable image file format or EXIF files are images that are captured by UAV's onboard camera. The last fourth data source are identification, sensor and log files, which include valuable information as a digital footprint of the device, user, activity, and involved subjects of the investigation. Five steps investigation methodology used in this research for forensics purposes is presented on the slide. As a first step, factory reset procedures were performed for the drone itself and connected mobile device Samsung S8 Plus before performing planned flights. After the formatting, mobile device was updated to the latest Android version and the latest version of the DJI GO 4 application was installed. Second step included scenario creation, which incorporated simulation of a typical UAS activities 
like flights in different areas and times, a picture footage and video recording, home point activation, settings adjustment, etc. Data acquisition phase included a collection of all possible data based on approved forensically sound techniques. In fourth data analysis phase, authors investigated data acquired from the UAS. The report and presentation phase was the final step of the digital forensics investigation process, partly given by this research paper and a presentation today. Typical digital forensic analysis is normally conducted using commercial forensic tool, which was usually have a proven record for accuracy. Any examination using non-validated tools is considered as a risk. Table presented at the slide provides the most comprehensive analysis of the possible elements of a typical UAS and thus possibilities for data storage, transmission and afterwards data acquisition regarding forensics investigations. Multiple systems are involved in providing the full functionality of DJI Mavic Air UAS and thus in this research data acquisition was conducted on UAV and smartphone application DJI GO 4, uh, which are seen on table like parts 1 till 4, as parts of this URAs and primary goal of this research. Commercial forensic tools uh, UFA Touch 2 and Physical Analyzer from Celebrate Incorporated were used to perform data acquisition, analysis and reporting providing very unique opportunities regarding forensic analysis of the DJI Mavic Air, involving non-invasive and non-destructive data acquisition as important goals of this research. UAS elements seen at the table and numbered from 5 till 11 are not part of this research paper. Also, our research wanted to emphasize that there are also other UAS elements which could contain valuable investigation data. And this is planned to be analyzed in some further research. UAVs data acquisition seen at the picture in this research included internal and external storage data extraction. UAV's internal mounted storage was a micro SD card, 8 GB storage, permanently attached to the main board of the UAV, while external storage was a micro SD card with 128 GB of storage. Mobile device Samsung S8 Plus was used for running DJI GO 4 application seen on the slide. File system mobile forensic extraction method was performed by connecting mobile device with the UFA Touch 2 used for data extraction from the device and the application. Both, both extractions provided many important digital evidence which could benefit potential forensic investigation. Results were analyzed by physical analyzer and can be seen in discussion of this research paper. Since data analysis uh, phase provides a lot uh, of valuable information regarding potential digital evidence, it is hard to exclude the most important artifacts. Table seen at the slide provides anonymous information about potential evidence gathered into categories and providing some details regarding some of the data. Identification data files provide information regarding devices, their internal components and users' identities, like serial numbers, account IDs, etc. 
Multimedia content present information about images and video files and their content extracted from UAV and DJI GO 4. Depending on the data extraction method, deleted files from unallocated space can also be recovered and analyzed. Multimedia activity data provided information about details of activities which are involved in creating multimedia content. Those data provide geolocation information for critical locations, launching, landing and home or return locations, and also provided full flight path information and timestamps of involved activities. Wi-Fi data like SSID and password were found. Metadata of images and videos are available and details, just like automated usage log files, UAV telematics, diagnostics error codes, power on and shutdown times, system events, etc. Made by UAV itself and correlated with timestamps. In UAV forensics, a lot of interest involves flight logs. Pictures seen on the slide provide visualization of flight records and UAV's journeys gathered from acquired data, analyzed, visualized and validated by using two forensic tools. An comparative analysis of the results of visualization of two forensic tools has been made. Both visualizations are made from one DAT file extracted from DJI GO 4 application. Picture on the left provided visual information available after analysis by forensic tool Physical Analyzer, while picture on the right provided visual information available after analysis, analysis by tool CSV View. After analyzing similarities and differences, there are minor differences regarding visualization points and flight logs. This also provided cross-validation and verification of forensic tools and thus providing the visibility of evidence. Drones are becoming more sophisticated and their usage becomes more needed from legitimate to non-legitimate activities. As a valuable source of potential digital evidence, use of UAVs could greatly enhance the efficacy of a digital investigation. Digital forensic analysis of drones is increasingly used to determine if a device has been used for a non-legitimate activity. Due to the recent societal use of UAVs, and their services, the need for UAV forensics will become a necessity. By anal um, analyzing acquired data, authors located information about the possible sources of evidence grouped into a few categories depending on the type of the acquired data. The outcomes of this research study can be seen in a few ways. Investigation of possible elements of an UAS for the purpose of forensic analysis. Examples of data which are available for the use of a specific UAV, DJI Mavic Air. And possibilities of a commercial forensic tools for the purpose of acquisition, analysis, parsing and visualization of gathered data from drones. Thank you for your attention.
My name is Marek Ethmar. I am from the private university Ambis from the Czech Republic and uh, me to, together with other guys from the Czech uh, Technological University uh, we would like to inform you about outputs of our research activities that were focused on uh, possibilities of using data envelope analysis for quality management of public services at the local level. What's concerning uh, uh, context of our research? Uh, Czech Republic, uh, as other uh, Central European countries, is characterized by a num high number of separate settlements and independent municipalities. In fact, we have more than 12,000 uh, individual settlements, and these settlements uh, consist of more than 6,000 independent municipalities. Each territorial self-government uh, unit is responsible for uh, development activities, including the provision of local public goods and, of course, uh, uh, increase that are used for in order to increase satisfaction of clients uh, of these authorities. Each unit has its own procedures uh, through which its management uh, manages the organization, planning, organizing, communicating, etc. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the task for, for our uh, system of public administration is how to ensure the efficiency and effectiveness of management of these organizations and, of course, the efficiency of providing public uh, services at local level. After the territorial reform of the public administration in the Czech Republic at the beginning of the millennium, the attention of uh, Ministry of the Interior, which is uh, responsible for quality management of, and system of public administration in our country, uh, focus on supporting uh, processes, uh, including also modernizing public administration. And one uh, team of, uh, uh, of these activities uh, is also increasing the efficiency of public expenditures. So, it was the reason why uh, Czech uh, uh, Technology Agency supported also our project and uh, uh, the outputs of our activities will be utilized by the Ministry of Interior and uh, in order to implement the strategy framework for development of public administration, which is conceptual document of the Ministry of the Interior adopted by Czech government. Uh, as I said, all Czech municipalities are obliged to provide basic administrative services uh, to a minimum extent and uh, typical activities that are provided by these uh, uh, local entities is uh, uh, public uh, school, uh, providing elementary schools and uh, public libraries. The high number of observation uh, makes it possible to investigate efficiency uh, providing of, this, of these services and uh, today is very popular using uh, data envelope analysis methodol methodology for the purpose of managing the efficiency also public uh, services. What's concerning this uh, uh, approach? The data envelope analysis or DIA 
is non-parametric method for estimating the production boundary. DA measures the technical efficiency and decision-making unit uh, relative to other units. Technical efficiency is therefore relative and depends on the set of all units. Units still lie at the production line or marked as effective, while units that lie below the production line are marked as ineffective. Inefficient units are also assigned an efficiency score between 0 and 1, which indicates how far the unit is from the production boundary. Units with an efficiency rate of 1 are effective, and units which an efficiency rate of of less than one are ineffective. The method was originally applied in the business sector, but later it has been also applied in evaluating the effect effectiveness of public services and public uh, administration services. What's it concerning uh, uh, our approach? We have two phase uh, uh, operating in uh, very heterogeneous environment. It means that uh, we have uh, more than 6,000 uh, uh, municipalities, but on one side we have very small units with uh, approximately 50, 60, 70 inhabitants, and on the other side uh, there, are, there is a Prague with more than 1,300,000 inhabitants or some other large cities. So the fir first task for us was uh, grouping of municipalities so uh, for segmentation of variables and uh, we uh, used two uh, approaches. The first was based on number of inhabitants uh, in a municipality and the second was based on time to drive by car to the closest municipality with extended power or extended competence or regional development centers or agglomeration centers. We use the following assumption when using this method. The output should be homogeneous as the quality of services is standardized by legislation. However, service providers very widely in terms of population size, number of consumers, amount of resources available, income of municipal budgets. The consequence is that the smallest municipalities don't provide services to their citizens and use the capacities of large municipalities. We also consider the impact of the municipality's position on development centers or their position within functional agglomeration on the efficiency of services provided. Therefore, in the first step, we examine the efficiency of the whole set of municipalities providing the services. Uh, above all, we are interested in efficiency of smaller, more homogeneous groups, reflecting the size of the municipality town and, or town and uh, its position in the settlement structure. The separation approach splits the heterogeneous data sample into several homogeneous subsamples according to one or more environmental variables and performs DA separately for each subsample. The advantage of this approach is its simplicity and straightforward interpretability. However, it significantly reduces the sample size, making it in unusable in many studies. The all-in-one model directly includes environmental variables in DEA as inputs or outputs. The two-stage model adjusts the efficiency score based on the dependency between preliminary efficiency scores and environmental variables using regression analysis. Data level analysis uh, ap approach uh, used for measurement of public uh, library services. Uh, when evaluating the efficiency of public libraries, we utilize 10 variables in total. 
All variables except the town distance are strongly positively correlated, while the town distance is moderately negatively correlated with the others. For the efficiency analysis, we consider the following three input variables, total expenditures. It means the total expenditures in check rounds by the municipality on labor activities, employees, the number of full-time equivalent equivalents of library employees, and collection, the total number of books or other units owned by the library. Uh, then we consider the following four outputs variables. Re registrations, the total number of users registered in the library. This variable captures the size of the reader's base. Circulation, the total number of books loans. This variable captures the main activities of libraries, book lending. Events, Attendance, uh, the total number of visitors of events organized by the library in 2017. The variable captures the cultural role of libraries and collection editions, the positive part of difference between the book collection in 2017 and 2016. This variable captures the increase of the capital of libraries. All information varies from Naples. It's, uh, uh, organization founded by Czech uh, Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport. What's concerning the, uh, our, the second analysis? Uh, this uh, uh, was focused on primer, primary schools. Uh, in the case of elementary schools, we considered seven output uh, variables and just one input variable for DA and two segmentation variables. We were very limited by the data, uh, availability and quality. As the A input uh, variable we choose uh, due to availability quality of data only current expenditures on primary schools. As data output variables we consider it. Primary schools count in a municipality. Total number of pupils in primary schools in municipality, total number of classes in primary schools in municipality, total number of pupils in the first grade primary schools, uh, also uh, total number of pupils in the second grade of primary schools, total number of the first grade classes in primary schools in the municipality, and uh, similar situations concerning the second grade of classes. And uh, now you can see the outputs of our uh, research. There are descriptions of uh, individual categories. Uh, there you can see uh, limits of population and, and now and their uh, distance to regional uh, development center or to municipality with extended power, less or more than 15 minutes. Uh, the efficiency of libraries, regardless, regardless of the categorization by municipalities, reaches an average 0, 1, 9, 2. Subsequently, the mean efficiency values for the given expert category were calculated. In the case of the smallest municipalities, the value range from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, which represents a significant inefficiency. And uh, now uh, to the efficiency of public libraries. The first category showed average efficiency uh, nearly 0 0.8. It happened due to the fact that 25% of units were efficient within the category. This high share of efficient units were usually caused by zero expenditures or employees, and this happened more often than in other categories. It can be urged that the operation of most municipal libraries is inefficient with respect to the input and output data analysis. The influence of agglomeration or the position of the municipality in the hinterland of a larger city is noticeable only for municipalities with more than 500 inhabitants. Easily accessible regional center metropolis where the population of the villages uh, spend a lot, uh, at least a few hours during the day employment, use of high public services, 
reduces the efficiency of the operation of local libraries. Also concerning the application, the results of DA analysis can be viewed at the web-based application in the web browser. There is a description of the address. The architecture of the application is typical for such applications. Free layer one, the database layer is composed by Oracle DB server. Application layer use PL, SQL, R language and PHP. Final dynamic web pages are created dynamically by PHP and the presentation layer Ajax is used on the client side. Uh, this is a description of hardware, processor, uh, memory disk and software which uh, were used. And how to use this application? After the login to application, splash screen with many is displayed. The user can display a list of town villages, their statistical data result of computing and uh, comparison. Ajax script buffers always part of data. The time from selection from many to display is up to five seconds. The measurement was performed on the local network in one building, two segments, using Google Chrome browser. When it was accessed uh, using for G mobile network, the time from selection from a menu to display is up to 10 seconds. The application can be used by three types of users. The first, an anonymous user without the need to register or provide any personal information. Second, a registered user with the role of analyst. And the third, a registered user with the role of administrator. An anonymous user can either log in, in or select the opinion to use the functionality of calculating the efficiency comparison with other municipalities. For municipalities with which they compare the fictitious municipality with the selected parameters, the user sees only the calculated number which is used for comparison not the values of the parameters that were used for the calculation. A registered user with the role of analyst can see the list of municipalities the, that contains basic information about each of them. The user can see all information about previous calculations and the value of all parameters used to calculate the municipality's efficiency. A registered user with the role of administrator has the same rights as the user with the role of analyst. High, his higher rights allow him to edit users, registration, change and delete data. Conclusions. Public services are provided by a very heterogeneous spectrum of municipalities represented by small villages with several dozens of cities up to big cities. In order to make comparisons in uh, as homogeneous uh, groups as possible, categories of municipalities were proposed that reflect the size of the domestic population and the position of municipalities in the settlement of structure. The efficiency of libraries, regardless of categorization by municipalities, reaches an average of 0.44 in the case of the smallest municipalities, the mean efficiency values range from 0.3 to 0.8, which represents a significant inefficiency. It can be argued that the operation of most municipal libraries is ineffective with respect to the input and output data analysis. As the size of the settlement increases, efficiency increases on average. The most effective are library services in towns and cities. The segments with more inhabitants had high efficiency of elementary schools in general. Only municipalities with inhabitants from 500 to 999 had the lowest efficiency, both with the driving distance below and above 15 minutes to the closest bigger town. The findings are important for the discussion on how to set the availability of public services.
At present, efficiency doesn't play a key role in capacity building. The establishment of municipal library actually depends solely on an independent decision of the municipal council. The funding is conditioned by the willingness to cover the deficit of its operation with regard to the overall size of the municipal budget. The operating costs of municipal libraries are covered often at the expense of other agendas performed by municipalities, e.g. in the form of sharing staff capacity. This means that some of the costs are not reflected in the financial statements associated with the library services or are not even monetized. This means that the efficiency of small municipal libraries may in fact be even lower on average. Representatives of municipalities as well as civil servants of the Ministry of the Interior will obtain a tool enabling them not only to compare the efficiency of individual municipalities, but uh, thanks to the extensive database and a map display also a tool for modeling the catchment circuits and services efficiency. So, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, if you will have any question, don't hesitate to contact me at this email address. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation of the paper titled Methodology Proposal for Proactive Detection of Network Anomalies in E-Learning System During the COVID-19 Scenario. Authors of this paper are Ivan Cvitic, Dragan Perakovic, Marko Perisha, and Anka Jurkot. Agenda for today's presentation can be seen on this slide right here where firstly i will say something uh, about network anomalies through introduction and uh, goal and purpose of this research after that i will uh, shortly say something about motivation and problem definition right after uh, i will say i will speak about methodology uh, for DDoS traffic detection model development and research uh, results and discussion and finally few words for conclusion of this presentation. Anomaly represents samples in the data that deviate from the previously defined normal behavior of the observed phenomenon. Observed from the aspect of information communication system, anomalies in communication are generally related by one or several network devices. This is often a result from illegitimate network activities in the system, with the anomalies of network traffic having the potential of negatively affecting the operation of the information and communication system or services. One of the frequent causes of anomalies in the network traffic is distributed denial of service or DDoS attack. Over the last two decades, numerous studies have been directed to the development of methods, models, and systems that can detect DDoS traffic in real time. Nevertheless, uh, the number of DDoS attacks and the amount of DDoS traffic is constantly increasing, which is the reason for further research in the area of detection of security threats of this kind. Despite continuous research into network traffic anomalies, cyber attacks uh, are still frequent and can have numerous negative effects on the predicted performance of information communication systems and availability of information communication services. The pandemic of coronavirus highlighted the importance of availability of e-learning system and services so the goal of this research is to propose a research methodology for development of DDoS traffic detection models at the attack target in scenario where flash events generated traffic represents legitimate traffic, such as alerting services during COVID-19 pandemic. Crisis situations such as mentioned pandemic of coronavirus result in the need uh, for isolation of users such as students, teachers, administrators, uh, whereby education and support process rely on the reliable work of the e-learning system and all his elements. On March 16, 2020, there was a DDoS attack on AAI at Edu HR system responsible for uh, authenticating users to access various e-learning services such as Merlin uh, Webinar e-learning center, Dabar Hrčak file sender, and many others in Republic of Croatia. The conducted attack indicated the need uh, to research and find solution for cyber threats, primarily DDoS attacks, that are applicable in specific scenario. According to data from the Croatian University Computing Center, uh, during the March 2020, in the month in uh, which remote education began due to COVID-19 pandemic, the A uh, AAI uh, Edu HR system recorded 11 million uh, around 11 and a half million successful authentication for uh, 500,000 unique users in which can be seen on the first figure in comparison uh, in March 2019 uh, the same system 
had a total of 3 million and uh, 200,000 su successful authentication of 250,000 unique users, which can be seen in the other graph. Authent authentication through uh, AAI AdWHR was most commonly used to access Microsoft Office 365 system for schools. Uh, Lumen and search systems such as uh, Merlin uh, for remote learning system for students and teacher and uh, information system for high uh, higher uh, education uh, primary the Studomat module. The presented data indicated the occurrence of flash crowd phenomenon. This occurs uh, when legitimate requests to access a web-based service exceed the statistically normal number of legitimate requests. Accordingly, uh, flash crowd may adversely affect the performance of the DDoS attack detection models based on machine learning methods that use data sets created during the period when the number of service requests is common. Such models are often detecting flash crowd traffic as a DDoS attack traffic, even though it represents a legitimate service request. Some authors are researching solutions that uh, can differentiate flash crowd and DDoS traffic by using human behavior and interaction, but such uh, solutions are not acceptable uh, to users. In order to achieve effective detection of DDoS uh, and for reaction uh, to such attacks in specific cases of flash crowd phenomenon under crisis situations such as coronavirus pandemic, the detection model should be based on the abil uh, ability to distinguish between DDoS traffic uh, generated under flash crowd conditions. One of research direction followed by this uh, Methodology proposal is to identify the unique characteristics of flash crowd uh, traffic with a V uh, DDoS traffic as a basis for development of DDoS traffic detection model. Implementation of efficient and effective research for dealing with the described problem requires well structured research methodology. Uh, such methodology proposal uh, it can be seen on this activity diagram uh, in this slide right here. So we propose research implementation through four phases methodology uh, and activities. Uh, first, uh, we propose first phase uh, as analysis of existing elements of the e-learning ecosystem and establishing the theoretical basis uh, and dif differences between DDoS and flash crowd attack. Uh, second phase uh, is forming of uh, laboratory environment. Third phase development of DDoS traffic detection model, perform, uh, validation and performance evaluation of the developed uh, model. And fourth phase, fourth phase uh, is analysis of applicability of the developed anomaly detection model and the reaction capabilities based on the operation of the developed model. In first phase of the research, the current scientific literature uh, will be analyzed for purpose of ident identifying the elements of the e-learning ecosystem, architecture, uh, communication topologies, and technologies and other relevant characteristics of uh, such environment. The purpose of the uh, aforementioned uh, research activity is to provide adequate recommendation and guidelines guidelines in the last uh, phase of the research with the purpose of uh, ensuring the availability of e-learning services and minimizing the negative impacts of uh, emergence and realization of cyber threats such as DDoS attacks. 
Phase two, second phase should include the establishment of a laboratory environment for generating and collecting legitimate or flash crowd and illegitimate or DDoS traffic. The laboratory environment is planned to be established at the Department of Information Communication Traffic uh, within the laboratory for security and forensic analysis of the information communication system. Flash crowd and DDoS traffic generate generation is planned uh, with the implementation of the dedicated hardware platform. Such platform is able to simulate realistic flash crowd and DDoS traffic and also provides advanced management and defining features uh, of the generated traffic at different layers of the uh, OC model. The next planned activity is to collect and store the generated traffic on the dedicated computers in uh, PCAP format files, which is suitable for further manipulation in the form of analysis and extraction of the traffic feature values. Phase three. So the previously carried out activities laid the foundation for the third phase of planned research. This phase encompasses the development of the network traffic anomalies detection model. The first step uh, in this phase is to analyze and select adequate, uh, adequate uh, super, supervised machine learning method from the set of uh, ensemble methods that will suit the solving of binary classification problem. In solving such problem, the objective is to check the uh, congruence of the generated new traffic sample with the sample of legitimate traffic. Uh, the incongruity of the traffic features value with the values of the features of legitimate traffic above the de defined threshold will mean that the device is generating generates DDoS traffic with within the observed time. For implementation of a chosen method available machine learning uh, platform will be used such as TensorFlow, Weka, uh, Orange, Hadoop, uh, Apache Spark and similar. The last step of this phase is to validate model performance through standard validation measures for classification models such as accuracy, precision, specificity, uh, kappa, coefficient, uh, rate of false uh, and true positive results, confusion matrix and so on. Last phase uh, is applicability of the developed uh, anomaly detection model. So in the uh, final phase, the uh, applicability of developed model in the real scenario through case study will be analyzed. Also the guidelines are, and recommendations for response to the anomalies detected with the developed model will be defined. Purpose of this activity is minimizing the negative effects of cyber threats such as DDoS on availability of e-learning services, particularly in crisis situation uh, such as pandemic of SARS-CoV-2 virus when such services are critical for the undisturbedly running of educational and supporting process. Using proposed methodology for developing model uh, of network traffic anomaly detection, as well as guidelines and recommendation for reaction and detection anomaly, provides the potential for further practical application, as well as strong socio-economic benefits from several aspects. Uh, the research implementation with the framework of the proposed project is significant for the development of the research area since it considers the challenges in the specific scenario of using e-learning services resulted from COVID-19 pandemic. In proposed research, it is planned to form open and public data set uh, repositories containing network traffic, generated uh, simulating flash crowd uh, scenarios and DDoS attacks. Such repository will benefit uh, other researchers for the purpose of further uh, research of behaving flash crowd traffic, how to distinguish it from the other types of traffic such as DDoS or some other types of traffic anomalies. Planned uh, extensive use of machine learning, especially assembled type of uh, machine learning methods 
will potentially result with develop, uh, develop anomaly detection model that can uh, proactively detect cyber threats and uh, quietly react on such threat. There are several results that are expected through implementation of proposed methodolo methodology. First, expected results uh, result is determined theoretical basis of characteristics and main differences between traffic generated through during flash crowd events and DDoS attacks discovered by other uh, researchers second expected results uh, is formed laboratory environment uh, for generating legitimate and illegitimate network traffic and third uh, third expected result is uh, collected data set of legitimate and illegitimate traffic uh, for further analysis fourth expected result is the repository of data set uh, publicly available for uh, other researchers uh, fifth result is developed uh, network traffic anomaly detection model and sixth, res sixth result is defined guidelines and recommendation for reaction on detect detected uh, cyber threats for minimizing negative impact of availability of e-learning services in crisis situ situations such as COVID-19 pandemic. That will be all from me thank you for your attention
Hello, my name is Ivan Feuerenbacher and I will be presenting you our paper entitled The Effect of Non-Wi-Fi Interference on the Throughput of IEEE 802.11 based wireless networks. The reason why we choose this subject is the importance of today's Wi-Fi networks. However, interference is a perennial issue in wireless networks which can drastically affect network performance, including throughput. This is primarily because both 2.4 and 5 GHz bands are part of the licensed ISM band, which is used not only for Wi-Fi, but for non-Wi-Fi communication purposes as well. Therefore, there is a wide array of potential sources of interference that can negatively affect the baseline expectation of every Wi-Fi network. And that is the throughput. There are two main types of interference in Wi-Fi networks. The first one, Wi-Fi interference, represents the simultaneous coexistence of various Wi-Fi networks. The second one, non-Wi-Fi interference, represents the coexistence of Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi devices, both operating at the same frequency, such as cordless phones, Bluetooth handsets, audio and video transmitters, microwave ovens, or baby monitors. Several researchers claim that during network deployment, network practitioners are only focused on ensuring signal coverage, while they often ignore network throughput. Instead, they should completely understand the effects of non-Wi-Fi interference in order to continually improve the networks. Therefore, various studies have addressed the non-Wi-Fi interference and have studied the effects of non-Wi-Fi devices from 2.4 GHz band on Wi-Fi network performance, including throughput. However, most of these studies have focused mainly on non-Wi-Fi devices mostly used in a home environment and not on devices that can be used in larger areas such as hotels or conference halls, or have not provided specific details of the effect of a wireless audio transmitter on the IEEE 802.11 throughput. Therefore, to fill these gaps, we decided to measure the effect of such device on the throughput of Wi-Fi network. The purpose of the present study is twofold. First, we wanted to measure the magnitude of wireless audio transmitter on the throughput of wireless network. And then, we wanted to provide additional insights about the effect and magnitude of this type of non-Wi-Fi interference on its throughput. To do so, we have used the following equipment and methodology. We use this equipment to set up an experimental network setting. And this setting included the mobile phone iPhone SE was used as a Wi-Fi client which supports major Wi-Fi standards. Wireless audio transmitter line 6 was used as a non-Wi-Fi interferer and such device is used very often for wireless sound transmission in live environments such as hotels or conference halls. It was set up to operate on channel 4 and 9 in 2.4 GHz band. D-Link access point was used which supports IEEE 802.11, B, G and N standard and it was set up to operate on channel 6 
in 2.4 GHz band. We also used Spectrum Analyzer, which al allowed us to examine the channel utilization and recognize various signal patterns on the physical layer in monitor RF spectrum. And finally, we use throughput test application. The speed check internet speed test was used to measure the throughput of a wireless network. The test is internet based and the application consists of iOS based, based client and a worldwide network of high speed servers for reliable results. Then an experimental network architecture was established in the laboratory for modeling and optimizing information and communication networks and services here at the Department of Information and Communication Traffic. In a nutshell, the mobile phone, the mobile phone was connected to Wi-Fi access point and between them we introduced the non Wi-Fi interference coming from Line 6 wireless audio transmitter. Since the throughput test uses an internet-based server, download and upload test path was from iOS throughput client to Wi-Fi access point over the internet and finally to the throughput test server. The throughput test app was installed on mobile phone, which established the connection with the closest throughput server, and then downloaded or uploaded a certain amount of data in a certain amount of time. This network setting allowed us to perform throughput measurements through a total of two scenarios. In first scenario, Mobile phone was connected only to access points without introduced non Wi Fi interference. We then collected two samples with 30 measurements each one for download and one for upload. Then we approach to scenario two, and in this scenario, Mobile phone was connected to the same access point as in scenario 1, but here we introduced the non-Wi-Fi non interference coming from the wireless sound transmitter. As we can see from the figure, line 6 wireless sound transmitter is represented by these two red peaks in the Wi-Fi RF spectrum. We then followed the same procedure from scenario 1 and collected two samples with 30 measurements each, one for download and one for upload. Please note that measurements were taken exclusively at periods with 0% of channel utilization, which was examined by Spectrum Analyzer. After collecting the data, we needed to perform data analysis through following four steps. In step one, mean values for download and upload data rates for each sample were obtained. Then, normality assumption for the collected data for each sample was evaluated. In the third step, appropriate test was chosen based on the results from the second step in order to test the homogeneity of variances. In other words, we wanted to check whether download or upload data rates come from the population with the same variance. In final and fourth step, we also needed to select appropriate t-test in order to test the alternative hypothesis if data rate's mean difference is greater than zero. 
or in other words will download and upload data rates from scenario one be greater than data rates from scenario two where, where we introduce the non-Wi-Fi interference and will these results be sign statistically significant? So the main results are summarized on this slide. In the first step, we can already see the significant drop of data rates during scenario two when we introduce the non-Wi-Fi interference from our Line 6 wireless audio transmitter. In the second step, we check the normality assumption, which was violated for download from scenario 1. And this result is significant at 10% significance level. Then, in the, test, in the ter third step, we opted for Levine's test because it is more robust to normality violation, violation assumption and the test showed that variances differ and that we can reject the null hypothesis that variances are the same and the results were significant at 1% significance level. In fourth step, we perform two sample t-tests with unequal variances and the results were significant at 1% significance level, confirming the difference between download and upload data rates before and during interference from audio wireless transmitter. In other words, we can confirm the alternative hypothesis the difference between the mean data rates from download or upload is greater than zero and the results are statistically significant at 1% significance level. For a more detailed view of our results, please consult the results section of the paper. So, what does all this mean? Well, we found that Line 6 wireless audio transmitter caused very serious degradation of network throughput. Moreover, the mean data rates were reduced by 85%, which is a very significant drop. Therefore, we can confirm that data rates were seriously reduced during simultaneous coexistence of both IEEE 802.11 network and active interferer on the same channel in 2.4 GHz band. This is because Line 6 wireless audio transmitter transmits continuously, thus occupying the channel most of the time. In other words, the Wi-Fi station will detect non-Wi-Fi energy from the interferer on the physical layer and will either back off from accessing the channel or will try to transmit but with increased probability of dropped packets. In both cases, the network throughput will be significantly reduced and the same effect is present with other similar devices such as wireless camera or cordless phone. Therefore, we can conclude that interference from devices like Line 6 wireless sound transmitter continues to be an important problem in wireless networks. Such non-Wi-Fi device is often used in various hospitality facilities such as hotels or conference halls and may significantly affect the performance of Wi-Fi network. Taken together, our analysis leads to the conclusion that intensive interference from devices like wireless audio transmitter may be critical for Wi-Fi communications if located near Wi-Fi stations. In addition, it can even interrupt communication or lower data rates to a level where Wi-Fi network will become unusable. At the end, 
We all know how important good Wi-Fi network is nowadays, especially knowing that, according to a recent research, hotel visitors will value more a good Wi-Fi network than the breakfast. You know how they say that the breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but I guess it's not without a good Wi-Fi network. And remember, as I always say to my students, the home is where the good Wi-Fi network is. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you have any question or feedback, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Badovinac. I come from the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Transport and Traffic Sciences, and today I will give you a presentation on assistive technologies in function of visually impaired person mobility increase in smart shopping environment. The content of this presentation is divided into five main parts. The first part is an introduction, where I will give a brief explanation of similar solutions that are proposed. In the second part, I will explain how we defined user requirements for our solution. In the third part, the architecture of the proposed system will be presented. In the fourth part, I will explain the proposed functionalities of our solution and the fifth part is the conclusion. The development of information and communication technologies enabled more efficient development of assistive technologies and their application in everyday living of visually impaired person. The objective of this research is to show the possibilities of IC technology in the function of increasing the mobility of visually impaired person during everyday shopping. With the proposed solution, it is possible to increase the degree of users' quality of life and enable their easier integration in society. During recent years, similar solutions like Robocart, ShopTalk, Grozy and iCare were proposed to make it easier for people with visual impairments to shop. Robocart presents a solution in the form of a shopping cart that enables user navigation in the store based on RFID labels. For obstacle detection, it uses laser sensors. Product detection is made by using the barcode scanner, which is mounted on the shopping cart or connected wirelessly. The user leans the scanner on the shelf to find the barcode of the desired product. ShopTalk presents a solution for user navigation in the store and product detection of the shelf. The solution consists of a barcode reader that is connected to a portable computer that the user carries as a backpack and a keyboard that a user wears on his shoulder. Grozy presents the solution in the form of a glove, which enables product detection by using a camera that is connected to a portable device that a user carries on his back as a backpack. The portable device analyzes the captured image, and when the product the user is looking for appears in the image, by using vibrating motors in the glove, the solution signals to the user that the product is on the shelf. Once the product is detected, the solution guides the user to the product. The user can also create a shopping list on the website, which can be loaded onto the portable device. iCare presents a solution also in the form of a glove that contains an RFID reader. When the user passes in front of the shelf, he gets the information about the product department of the store in which he is currently located. When the user takes the product of the shelf, he gets additional information about it based on the scanned RFID tag on the product. The main purpose of this solution is browsing the products that are in the store. User requirements were defined based on a survey conducted among the targeted population of student age users. The survey was conducted at the University of Zagreb where the Office for Students with Disabilities has 40 students with visual impairments that have active student status. In this research, the population included 34 students, of whom 18 were males and 16 were females. 
Most respondents were between the age of 18 and 24, as is shown in Table 1. 17 of the respondents were blind and 17 partially sighted. The questionnaire consisted of 24 questions that helped us get information about the habits of visually impaired people during shopping. For example, how often do they shop? Do they shop alone? What bothers them the most when shopping in a store? What kind of information about the products and the store environment is important to them? Would they use a shopping cart based on a sensor technologies? Etc. The architecture of the proposed system is based on cloud computing for the blind concept that provides the user with the ability to manage the data necessary to achieve all the functionalities of the proposed system. The proposed system consists of a mobile application and specially designed smart shopping cart equipped with sensor technology. The architecture of the system shown in figure 1 contains the following elements. Cloud computing for the blind database divided into a user's database and a store database. The user's smartphone on which the required application is installed. A smart shopping cart equipped with sensors. Indoor positioning system for indoor navigation and a point-of-sale device for credit card payments. The figure also presents the different types of communication and technologies used to connect the certain parts of the architecture. The defined functionalities of the proposed solution divided into shopping cart functionalities and application functionalities are presented in Table 2. Proposed shopping cart functionalities are user navigation through the store, call towards the employee, product scanning while shopping, bill payment and completion of purchase. And proposed mobile application functionalities are user registration, creating a list of products, product detection on the shelf, locating the card at the entrance, locating the card during shopping and receiving an SOS notification. For user navigation through the store, it's proposed to use a system of internal navigation that would create a route of movement through the store based on the created shopping list. The system would give the shopping cart instructions on how to navigate through the store. The shopping cart would have built-in motors and would guide the user through the store, thus avoiding the use of aids in the form of a white cane or a guide dog. For obstacle detection, it's proposed to install an obstacle detection sensor, for example a camera that can scan the environment and inform the user of an obstacle encountered. The shopping cart can then perform the obstacle avoidance procedure while notifying the user via application about actions taken. If the user is in a situation where he needs help, is given the option to call the employee by pressing the button located on the handle of the shopping cart. When that option is selected, the application establishes a VoIP call between the user and the employee. For the proposed solution, it is necessary to mark the products in the store with RFID tags. When the user puts the product in the cart, the RFID reader within the shopping cart scans the label and the user receives information about the product via the mobile application. In case of products like fruits and vegetables that are not marked with an RFID tag, the cart would have a built-in scale. Through the mobile application, the user would receive information about the, um, about the amount of the product he put in the cart. To pay the bill, the user is provided with two options. The first option is to go to the cash register. 
If this option is selected, the QR code is displayed on the screen of his mobile device. The cashier then scans the code with a barcode reader. The second option is to pay by using the application. The condition for using this option is to previously store the necessary credit card information inside the application. If the user selects this option, he can avoid waiting in line for the cash register and complete the purchase faster. For the user to be able to use the proposed solution, it is necessary to complete the registration. The user is required to enter basic information such as name, surname, email address, password, type of visual impairment, credit card information and types of allergens he is allergic to. By entering the information of visual impairment, it is possible to adapt the application to the user. By enabling TalkBank function or by adjusting the design in the form of a different combination of background and text color and font size. By entering the information about allergens, there is an option when creating a shopping list to receive a warning if the user puts the product which contains a certain allergen on a shopping list. By using the application, the user can create a new shopping list or edit the existing ones. When creating a new list, he can get all the necessary information about the product. By adding the product to the list, the user receives information about the cost of future shopping. After the shopping cart has brought the user to the product, it is necessary to detect the product on the shelf. After the user selects the product detection option on his application, the camera of his mobile device is turned on and the user takes a picture of the product. The image is then compared to the images from the database until a match is achieved. The user then receives information on whether he took the correct product. Before entering the store, the user should turn on Bluetooth option on his mobile device. There is a Bluetooth beacon embedded in the shopping cart and the moment the user with his mobile device is within the radius that the beacon is covering, the mobile device will detect the beacon signal and launch the application. Once the application has been launched, the user will select the shopping cart locating option and he will start receiving sound signals that will guide him to the cart. When choosing a product from the shelf, there is a possibility that the user will move away from the shopping cart. If the user is too far away from them, the sound signals will be sent to the user via application to help him return to them. By sending an SOS notification, the user can be informed about an unexpected or dangerous situation in the store. Once the store's security system detects the danger, the application will notify the user about the situation and the process of evacuating the user will begin. The conducted analysis of user needs defines the basic functionalities of the system of guiding and informing users in smart stores. A guidance system composed of smart card elements and application services integrated into a mobile device aims to increase the mobility of blind and partially sighted people. Previous solutions are partial solutions as a form of assistance to the blind and partially sighted people, while the presented solution represents the entire IC system as a part of assistive technology. This system architecture can also be implemented through the goals of the society 5.0 environment as one of the key factors in the integration of blind and partially sighted people into the social context. By applying such solutions, it is possible to increase the degree of mobility and quality of life 
of each user, regardless of their impairment. Thank you for your time.
This presentation describes the article Small Parts Recognition by Convolutional Neural Networks with implementation to virtual reality devices for assisted assembly task. The authors are Kamil Zidek, Jan Pitel, Ivan Pavlenko, Peter Lazorik and Alexander Hoshovsky. The paper uh, contains uh, these subsections. New approach to recognize small parts from high resolution 4K images grabbed by the embedded system with camera and trained convolutional network models. My idea is a combination of uh, standard machine vision techniques to identify blobs in high resolution image and parse to a suitable set or regions of interest which are later recognized by Trinet Convolutional Neural Network model. The next is 3D virtual models of uh, experimental parts are used for simple input data generation and two different embedded devices were selected for implementation. NVIDIA Xavier uh, Development Board with uh, dual 4K camera and integrated uh, artificial processing unit. And second is the Raspberry Pi 4 with external uh, unit uh, Intel Neural uh, Compute Stick uh, 2. And the last section is implementation of present and principle to the virtual device. HTC Vive Pro for assisted assembly task to train and check workers during uh, teaching process. The scheme presents uh, the process as flow diagram of technology and techniques implementation in three levels. The first level is preparation of 2D image sets from 3D virtual models by standard machine vision algorithms. The second uh, level, uh, experimental training, different CNN models and testing by embedded system with artificial processing unit. And the last third level is implementation of evaluated methodology and recognition by CNN models to virtual devices for assisted assembly task. The main principle is the extraction of some region of interests in assembly image, where can be located some parts and ignore empty places. The empty places are uh, usually Nothing is interesting for recognition, for example, only solid color or background. Currently used uh, CNN models can input only low resolution images. It is not possible to include high resolution images, for example, 4K or 8K, because they are automatically dull sampled to low resolution. This is the main reason why is recognition of small object a very problematic task. The first platform for testing of introduced approach is an embedded platform with integrated processing unit and Ubuntu OS Linux distribution system from NVIDIA Xavier Development Kit. The 4K image are acquired by Econ's dual camera system with 13 megapixel CSI module mounted in experimental stand with rapid prototyping holders. The second testing platform is embedded port Raspberry Pi 4, which doesn't include any processing unit. Additional computing power for CNN processing is acquired by USB module Intel USB Neural Compute Stick Movidius 2. The image is acquired by newer CSI camera 2 with 8 megapixels. Assisted assembly tasks can be implemented to virtual or augmented devices. 
it was selected HTC Vive Pro because it provides enough performance for CNN model execution by standard PC with a dedicated uh, graphic card. The HTC Vive Pro provides integrated dual camera and can be combined with leap motion for hand recognition of Trinet workers. The TensorFlow framework was used for training CNN model. NVIDIA SDK Manager provides TensorRT library for training CNN model acceleration on NVIDIA Xavier embedded device. Intel offers OpenVINO toolkit for CNN model acceleration for Intel Movidius USB stick uh, combined with Raspberry Pi 4. OpenCV library was used for ROI detection and Unity 3D engine was used for transfer CNN models to virtual reality de device HTC Vive. The trained model must be exported to suitable format for implementation to real devices. The methodology of uh, transport CNN model trained in TensorFlow to real devices in, is shown in figure. Frozen model is final evaluated model, which is minimalized by shrinking and optimized by speed execution for OpenCV DNN library, OpenVINO or TensorFlow RT environment. The images from real assemblies were used for evaluation recognition reliability after training the CNN model by the virtual 3D models. The left figure shows complete assembly with all parts and right figure shows all parts positioned in the fixture. All 3D models were generated by Autodesk Inventor, uh, 3D construction software, exported to OBG format and next to Blender for automated 2D samples preparation. It was created two separate sets, one for non-standard parts and second for standardized parts. These slides show the second set of uh, standardized parts. And this set consists of uh, 2D samples of washers, springs, bolts, nuts and barbie rings. This slide shows the training process uh, as timeline for classification and position loss of uh, non-standard parts. It's a two-top graph in a blue line and uh, classification and position loss of standardized parts is uh, bottom by uh, uh, visualized by a uh, red line. The teaching loss reach for non-standard parts is about uh, point, uh, zero, uh, 0 0.05 MIP for classification and 0 0.04 MIP for uh, the position and standardized parts uh, it's about uh, 0 0.08 uh, MIP in classification and uh, uh, 0 0.05 MIP for the position. This slide show experiments with extraction of a region of interest by standard uh, image processing filters. The left image uh, is a gradient filter. The middle image is contour transformation. And final region on the right is uh, Roy extraction with uh, some bonding box. The extraction process of a region of uh, intersecting is realized by standard machine vision algorithm gradients, contour closing square, 
and thresholding with ROI. In presented image are detected five regions with some pattern and one wrong detected region. This operation reduces image resolution for DNN input to 30% and increase the input resolution for every feature during the detection process. The recognition experiment with CNN models for non-standard parts on the top is uh, 3D virtual models evaluation and uh, in bottom pictures is real parts in pictures or molten in assembly and reached the reliability of recognition. This slide shows the second set of uh, Dynet models and it's a recognition experiment with uh, standardized parts. In top is uh, 3D virtual models of standardized parts and reached reliability. And in the bottom are uh, real images from uh, real assembly and to reach the reliability of uh, recognition. The result from evaluation uh, are summarized in uh, the table from all tested CNN models. It was used transfer learning for teaching process. This significantly decreased training time of CNN models. Two models were trained for standard and non-standard parts. We used the model, uh, pre-trained model Inception version 2 with SSD for both uh, groups. The CNN model was trained with a virtual models without power overlay, but for evolution it was used real images with overlays. Recognition evolution reached about 96% with virtual parts and with real parts about 70%. Recognition precision with real parts uh, degrees about 30%. This slide presents the conclusion. The article presents a new approach to recognize small parts for assisted assembly tasks by combining of standard machine vision with deep learning and CNN models. We created two CNN models, first for non-standard parts and second for small standardized parts with single shot detection. The main reason for the creation of the uh, two different uh, models is reusability of trained CNN model for standardized parts, which can be used for other assemblies. The first convolutional model acquires precision with real parts a uh, minimum of uh, 69%. Uh, the second CNN model acquired bad recognition in full image, but significantly better precision in classification after extraction of region of interest with a minimum of 73%. The main improvement in recognition precision can be preparation of new photorealistic inputs to teach samples with some textures instead of simple color material. Texturing can significantly increase recognition precision after the teaching process. The next works, the future works, will be implementation of segmentation from new version of uh, TensorFlow framework instead of simple single shot detection, which helps detect the exact position of parts and precise orientation in workspace. The next part can be 
replacement of virtual reality glasses ATC uh, Vive Pro by augmented uh, reality glasses from Microsoft HoloLens 2 combined by collaborative robot from ABB Yami and implementation to new automatized educational assembly line. Thanks for your attention.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Martin Mishko Pavlik and I am a PhD student of Technical University in Košice at Faculty of Manufacturing Technologies with seat in Brasov, situated in Slovak Republic. First of all, I would like to say that I am very thankful for the opportunity to present my paper at this online conference meeting. Today, I would like to present my paper with this topic Dynamic measurement of the surface after process of turning with application of laser displacement sensor. My presentation consists of five parts. As the first part is an introduction where we briefly introduce the classic use of non-contact sensors in practice. In second part, we will describe the technology of non-contact confocal sensors, its composition and the principle of measurement. The third part is focused on the application of sensor in an experiment with definition of machining and measuring conditions. The third part is intended to the evaluation of measurement results. And the last chapter we will summarize and describe the objective for the future research. So without further ado, we can move on the first part. In this time, when industrial production is increasingly changing from manual, physical work to progressive, automated and highly sophisticated, the application of modern measuring technology is an important part of such production. The requirements for measuring and reading data are diverse and create constant pressure on the development and application of new type of sensors. One of the many possibilities of using contactless sensors is application, for example, in measuring thickness of the glass, as you can see on the first figure. Another advantage of these sensors are their compact composition, which we, we can also measure the inner surface, such as uh, cylinders in an uh, engine, as we can see on the second figure. And uh, thanks to the high accuracy, which is one micrometer, we are also able to check a soldering connection on a motherboard, as you can see on the figure 3. My task was to uh, create a new possibility of using non-contact sensors. And uh, in our research, we are uh, trying to use this sensor in field of mechanical engineering in the form of uh, identification of damage of individual elements in a system machine, for example, like a tool or workpiece during the turning process. So the main thesis of this presentation is uh, description and uh, practical application of measuring scam with a non-contact confocal deviation sensor uh, on a workpiece, uh, which was a steel round bar C45 after a turning process and uh, we, wa we wanted to prove a new way of using the confocal sensors in immediate inspection of the workpiece after the machining process. Now something about a confocal sensor technology. The essence of this method is that uh, polychromatic white light from the sensor is projected on the measured surface through a multi-lens system. The lenses are arranged in so-called confocal arrangement when uh, in time of impact on the measured object, the radiation is by a natural chromatic aberration, which is a deflection of the light radiation, divided into the monochromatic components in our part colors with a different wavelength. The radiation is reflected back to the confocal diagram of the sensor through which only focus radiation with a specific wavelength pass to the electro-optical sensor. The amount of the light returning to the electro-optical receiver varies significantly depending on the position from the measuring object. As you can see, the function of this uh, sensor is shown on this figure. To be able to use this measuring confocal sensor, 
it was necessary to design a wiring diagram of the individual components and their connection to the evaluation unit. In this diagram, we can see the system which is connected to the evaluation unit, in our case by a laptop with the appropriate software. Confocal sensor, the measure and value from the measuring head with a resolution of 1 micrometer, send a digital signal to the amplifier, which is connected to the communication model. By using a confocal sensor, it is not necessary to install any additional evaluation hardware, such in the example of the triangulation sensors, because uh, the measurement value from the measuring head is immediately calculated by the PC software from the communication unit in the manufacturer's software. The data or, or datas are uh, written to the program memory, which is another advantage over uh, conventional mechanical meters, where the operator must manually write the measurement values. As the distance of the sensor from the measurement object increases, the measurement uh, inaccuracy will also increase, which is one of the disadvantages of this sensor. In addition to limited measuring distance, the measurement of the transparent or glossy surface, which can also or affect the accuracy of the measurement, is one of the another disadvantage of these sensors. In this section, uh, from all figures, we can briefly identify the connection scheme of the measuring diagram, which consists of the measuring head from the KNs industry, which was mounted onto the letter holder of the optimum cutting tool, to assuming a dynamic measurement of the entire measurement part. The digitalized data from the sensor head was transferred to the communication module, as you can see here, by using the amplifier as we mentioned. The amplifier is here. Where through Ethernet uh, and the connection of the system with PC software from KNS, uh, the name of the software was Navigator, was possible to observe a microscopic irregularities of the workpiece diameter, as you can see on this laptop. The main object of this experiment was to investigate a possibility to using a non-contact displacement sensor to measure microscopic irregularities in the form of difference in diameter deviation of three machine round bars with the same machining conditions but with different diameter. The cutting condition in this process were with uh, 0.2 mm, cutting deep 0.2 mm and a cutting speed 60 m per minute. We set the sensor to a horizontal position so that it is flush with the axis of the workpiece and the cutting tool. As a first step, we measure the zero point of the workpiece, from which we, de we then measure the distance differences with the prescribed measurement deviation, plus minus 1500 of uh, persons, in case of optimum distance from workpiece specified by manufacturer, such as 70 millimeters from the KN's manufacturer was set. Since this uh, is a dynamic type of measurement with the movement of the workpiece in a lattice spindle, it was necessary to design the spindle speed of the work table so as to eliminate the oscillation of the sensor and thus the measurement error cost. Three measurements also were performed in the experiment. In the first phase, we set the lattice spindle to a minimum speed of 150 revolutions per minute. In the second phase, we measured the entire length of the measurement round bars using the tool feed, which we selected to 1 mm per second. In parallel with the deviation measurement, we also measured the time. All measured values were written from the software to a table in Excel. Subsequently, we created a graph where we choose the distance on the measurement part on the x-axis and the values of deviation from diameter on the y-axis. 
As a first sample, we measured a round bar with a diameter of 23 mm and a length of 97 mm. The distance of the sensor from the workpiece was set to 70 mm, so that we achieved the best possible accuracy. After first look on the sample error are immediately visible after machining on the workpiece surface, as you can see here. By using a confocal sensor, we measure the entire surface of the workpiece and see how much deviation from the diameter occurred. The feed on the latte was set to 1 mm for faster conversion. The latte spindle, spindle was rotated 150 times per minute. The sensor was set to 1000 measurements per second with 1 micrometer accuracy. All measured data, which is sample represent 97,000 measurement values, were transferred into the Excel program and then a table was compiled with the average values for 10 mm section along the entire length of the workpiece as you can see here. From the measurement data of sample 1 was confirmed that there are errors on the surface, the section between 41 and 50 mm and 91 and 97 mm. The highest deviation was 37,000 of mm, as you can see here. The dimension of the second sample were 32, 23 mm in diameter and 94 in length. A total of 95,000 measurements were taken in a total time of 1 minute and 34 seconds. From the measurement data of sample 2, it was confirmed that the errors on the surface section between 21 and 30 mm, 51 and 60 mm, and 91 and 97 mm. A round bound radius of 23 mm and a length of 100 mm was chosen as the last sample. On this sample, a total of 100,000 measurements were taken in a total of time 1 minute and 40 seconds. From the measured data of sample 3, was confirmed that there are errors on the surface section between 11 and 30 mm and 81 and 97 mm. When we analyze a graph, it can be seen that the total average deviation of the workpiece diameter distance range from 24,000 mm to minus 400 of mm. Such is not a big deal for the ordinary machining, but for the high accuracy its measurement is very important, only a small deviation. By using these differences, we can determine the surface uniformity of the measurement material by identify, identifying uh, incorrectly machined workpieces in production. However, this confocal sensor also has a limitation. The measuring zone of this sensor is from 60 mm to 130 mm, while the optional zone is 70 mm. After exceeding this range, the sensor are not able to measure. Another area of research at the Faculty of Manufacturing Technology in Presho is the application of this sensor in the manufacturing companies and thus a replacement of the quality control after the machining, con machining non-contact sensors represent one of the best technology in the field of optical distance and position measurement. The disadvantage for small medium automated companies is the high purchase price of this device. Compared to more common diffuse, reflective or single channel optical sensor, but for the companies with the mass production and high degree of automatization and production process, it's necessary to achieve very high measurement accuracy, but the sensors are the necessity for them. In the next phase uh, of research, we would like to focus on statical, uh, statistical evaluation of the experiment based on the method of Design of Experiments or ANOVA, where uh, by using this statistic method we can reduce the number of experiments and speed up the evaluation process. The final result of the research should be an algorithm 
that would based on the values from the sensors evaluate the possible damage to the tools during the machining and thus the elimination of failure in production. And in the end, uh, as the author of this article, I would like to thank to a team of Progressive Production Technologies and our Vega project and all the researchers and my uh, very good friend and Professor uh, Josef Jurko, such as uh, my colleague with this paper. Thank you all for your attention and have a nice day.